This conference will now this conference will now be recorded. All set. All right. Good evening. The time being 4:48 p.m. I'd like to call the meeting of June 10th, 2021 to order. Before we get started, if you are joining us virtually, please mute your microphone during the meeting unless you want to speak. Otherwise, background noise will interfere at the meeting. Ooh, that got short. All right. Make a motion to bring the minute to June 3rd to the floor for discussion. Pledge, pledge. Oh, sorry. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Bug there. Now I'll bring the minutes to the June 3rd, 2021, to the floor for discussion. Yes, sir. I make a motion to accept the minutes of Thursday, June 3rd, 2021, as presented. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Gail. All right. I'll make a special announcement here. Uh, the board is pleased to announce that we have hired a new police chief, Corey Pizer, and she will begin on June 26 of this year. In fact, she will be joining us for the ribbon cutting ceremony, which is scheduled for Saturday, June 26, from 8 a.m. to 12 noon. Corey hails from Ormond Beach, Florida, and has 26 years of experience in law enforcement, and we look forward to working with her. I wanna take this opportunity to thank all those who have been actively involved in this intensive and thorough hiring process. The interview team included Franklin Police Chief David Goldstein, our own Lieutenant Abe Gilman, <laughs> community members Kevin LaChapelle, Ken Norton, and Selectman Scott Ruggles. The finalists had an opportunity to tour our new building, participate in a ride along with one of our officers, meet with police department personnel for a Q&A, followed by dinner with Sergeant Penault, Lieutenant Gilman, Chief Goldstein, and Kevin LaChapelle, <clears throat> then a meeting with community members and ending with a non-public with the selectmen. Many thanks to everyone who helped us make this important decision. It was truly, it truly was a community effort and we feel confident that Corey will bring our police department to an even higher level of community policing with 21st century policing practices. Mr. Chairman, I also want to include in there many thanks to our town administrator slash interim chief, Jeannie Forrester for spearheading the uh, framework for the committees and so on and so forth for the hiring process. Thank you, Jeannie. Thank you, Jeannie. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Justman. I'd also like to thank uh, Rich Mann, Richard Mann, for stepping in uh, as an interim administrator on extremely short notice. Uh, it was appreciated, and thank you. Thank you, Joe. Joe. Anyone else? All right. Been on in our agenda. We'll go to, uh, is it David Thiel? Did I pronounce it right? Yeah. All right. He's the head of school at Tilton School. Um, so uh, the time being, we're a little bit early, but uh, we're going to meet with him. Uh, I think I speak for the board uh, in saying welcome to Tilton. So, oh, yeah. It's yeah. a little. Thank you very much. So you got the whole school year first under your belt. And uh, the town has had a great relationship with the school and we look forward to continuing that relationship and uh, 
finally it's nice to be able to actually meet someone in person. So uh, thank you for your patience. Um, we hope you've enjoyed your first year. Uh, we're going to say first year. I know it's like a few days short, but um, I, I'm excited. Uh, I, uh, I like the, I love the school. I love what it does for the town, the, the, the kids coming out. Uh, this is just me personally, you know, the kids coming out and helping out with the seniors volunteering. They painted uh, <laughs> the mural. Um, they've always been accepting of, of, uh, people, uh, you know, coming through and, uh, I get to walk my dog through your school once in a while. So <laughs> I pick up after it though. So, and I also like to photograph your church, the chapel. Mm -hmm. I like to photograph that. So, and I've done a, some drone uh, for the previous uh, head head of school and his <laughs> wife. I did some drone videos for them in the fall. And oh, great. I did some, uh, did personally did help them do some trips with the international kids or kids that lived a long distance. We went apple picking one time and uh, did some other stuff. So very nice. Yeah. Very nice. So it was fun. Great kids. Great. All right. Well, I'm here first and foremost to say hello and introduce myself. Uh, you know, I've um, lived in Tilton now for almost a year. I, I moved uh, to town June 20th of last year. Um, but we've been pretty tightly quarantined up on the hill, you know, trying to make it through our COVID year. And um, and we had a very successful year in terms of COVID, um, um, you know, uh, safe to say among the among the most successful of schools of our type in the region. We we're, we're pretty happy to be able to keep kids in school the whole time and um, uh, play sports uh, almost every single weekend the whole the whole school year and finish the year with an in-person and mask-free commencement. Um, but uh, relationships have suffered in the meantime, you know, because we have maintained that bubble and we have not, um, and I have not been able to connect with so many members of the town as I would like to have. And um, and I know that, um, you know, we, we haven't been able to patronize businesses on Main Street as much as we'd like and, and things like that. So I'm hopeful that now that we're um, reaching the, uh, a, calmer time in the pandemic, I hesitate to say that it's over, um, uh, you know, those relationships can really start to expand and, and health conditions will allow us to connect a lot more. So um, I am a big believer that the school's fortunes are tied to the town's fortunes. And I think that um, it's a responsibility of the school to do what uh, it can with its resources and its uh, policies and its approach and its attitude to um, to be a a good neighbor and a strong part of the community and um, a patron of the community. Um, and whether that means, you know, weighing in on shared complaints about um, uh, drones and wheelie kids and, um, and things like that. Um, you can see I, I'm, I'm on the Tilton's Talking Facebook group uh -huh. um, <laughs> or offering our resources whenever we can, you know, uh, whether that's a uh, space to, to interview police uh, uh, candidates or, or things like that, you know, we're, we're eager to help out uh, when we can and, and hopefully because of health conditions improving, we'll be able to do more of that. Um, I have been able to connect a little bit with some local groups. The Tilton Historical Society has been uh, a, a group that I've interacted with quite a bit. Um, I've talked to folks on the Winnipesaukee Trail Commission, um, uh, reached out to the police in, in both good times and bad. Um, and uh, Jeannie and I have spoken a couple times. Um, and of course, I'm starting to introduce myself to the um, business owners on Main Street as well. Um, we have sort of three things that are going on in our minds that uh, I think it's worthwhile to, to, to mention to you all. And, and I guess this is the closest thing to any sort of agenda uh, I would have. Um, the first is you, you probably have noticed that we're already uh, going through uh, pretty dramatic renovations to the uh, Charles Tilton Mansion up on the hill. Um, the school <clears throat> received a hundred and eighty thousand dollar matching grant from LCHIP, which is the Land and Community Investment Heritage no Land and Community Heritage Investment Program, um, and we matched that with uh, a hundred and eighty thousand dollars of our own. And then we use that to springboard into a, a donor um, who put up a million dollars um, to assist in the renovations of the mansion. So, um, so we're we're putting in, a, you know, all said and uh, all said and done this year, it'll be about 1.2 million dollars into renovating the mansion, and that money is going to be used 
almost exclusively in the outside of the building. So visible from, from the town. It is roof, siding, interface, uh, lighting, landscaping. Um, so hopefully that will, will become um, something that um, is more of an attraction to the town and you know sort of part of the trinity of landmarks we have the mansion the arch and the and the island park um, right here on main street um, and we do think very much about um, our role as stewards of that space a, a, in terms of its its contribution as a as a notable piece of architecture and attracting people to the town um, the the second major thing we have going on is um, we've leased a space on Main Street to open a student-run coffee shop. And um, that is uh, designed to give us a footprint for engagement with the local community. Um, I don't know when we're gonna serve our first cup of coffee because it is student-run <laughs> and uh, it's, it's gone maybe a little slower than we, we thought it would, would go, but um, we'll be improving that space and opening up a coffee shop there um, pretty soon. And that's right on the corner of School Street and. Um, and Main Street, sort of uh, next to the thrift store there. So that's that's part of our plans. And, and then lastly, and I, I mentioned this to, to Jeannie when we when we met, um, I wanted to open a conversation, which I I, I don't think will you know uh, will reach any resolution anytime soon. I'm not under um, any assumptions in that regard. That, um, but uh, Pillsbury Lane, which is on the northern border of our campus, it's not really on the border of our campus. It sort of cuts through the upper third of our campus. And as we look at um, at uh, how we manage our campus, how we build community, how we manage security and, and other things, um, we've begun to um, ask whether it might be possible for Pillsbury Lane to become school property. And we would take over the management and uh, maintenance of that of that um, of that space, obviously providing right of way to residents on that street. Um, but right now there's only one resident on that street on the on the um, eastern corner, and the rest is all just abutted up against school property. So um, that's my whole spiel. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. I um, I didn't provide a, a bio and background and sort of where I'm from. I'm happy to provide that if you like, if you care. Um, but I figured I'd, I wouldn't um, spend a lot of time up front with that. So. Does anyone want to hear his bio or? Maybe the selectmen can introduce themselves too. Great. Right. So, yeah, I was going to do that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Halfway through, I'm like, oh, we didn't do that part. Uh, so I'll start with myself. Actually, I was going to start right over here with Pat, and then we'll go around the table. I'm Pat Constantino. I've been a selectman way back when Jim Clements was the headmaster. Um, we had a, we've always had a great relationship with Tilton, um, particularly with the uh, Julie Caldwell with the seniors and helping seniors helping seniors. We meet every year and we go out to different uh, homes, raking and things like that. Um, we started the Senior Center in 2010. We do a lot of work up there. Your kids, thank you for that. Um, but we do a, an awful lot with their homes and, and the work. That's going on 20 years now. Right. That, that, uh, you've done that. Um, it's been nice to be able to, that's something we have been able to continue here and there because even through the pandemic, because a lot of that is outdoors. So that's been great. Really been uh, very, we have a list maybe of uh, 14 or 15 groups in May or so that they go out and because of COVID we didn't last year, but um, we got to a couple that really needed the help and uh, very essential because the backyards are when it's particularly in the springtime when the plants come up and um, it can really set in a depression when you can't get out and get motivated and go out in your backyard and when the kids come down it uh, they go out and talk with them and and spruce out the backyards and now they can go out and feel good about themselves and be out in the backyards again so it's uh, usually I go in and, and talk with the groups before they head out and then meet the different places where they go and so it's really great it's a good experience for me as well as them so i really appreciate that um <clears throat> pillsbury lane that is a thoroughfare 
in it and it's a connecting spot as well as Academy Avenue. That would be a hard one to let go on that end, even though there aren't any um, residents there other than the school, it still would, but I understand you know, I'd be willing to talk about it, but uh, it is a, a, a thorough point to the upper end of uh, School Street, March Road, Colby Road, and, and then it goes into Sambiton. So a lot of people take that route rather than going through the lights and going up Route 3 mm -hmm. to get to them. So worth talking about, though. Hi there. Uh, my name is Joe Jessman, um, local guy, born and raised, uh, went through the local school system. I was one of the townie kids, and uh, I don't know what the relationship between the your your students and the local kids are now, but it was acrimonious sometimes <laughs> back in the late 60s. Uh -huh. uh, I echo Pat's comments uh, about Pillsbury Lane, and also that it's been a good relationship uh, with the school. Uh, sorry we didn't get to interact more over the course of the last year. Well, well, this is only the first year I'm here, so there will be plenty of time. There'll so, be plenty. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Thank you. Great. Welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Eric Pyre. I'm a, I'm a distant neighbor of the Tilton School. I uh, I live in the Tree Streets. Um, if I went out my driveway and I would be on High Street and I take that to the stop sign behind the school and then sometimes my GPS tells me to go straight, but I can't. <laughs> so um, uh, I've been active in town stuff since uh, different capacities. I'm also a uh, fire commissioner, so I'm unique in that position. I don't know if you know anything about the fire department, but it's not owned by either town. Mm -hmm. So we have um, board of commissioners, which is equivalent of a selectman in, in some aspects. So uh, I do that. Um, I basically I come here to sleep. I work <laughs> I work out of town, um, but I, I love this town I've, where I've raised chosen chose to raise my family, um, and I've made sacrifices to do that so that my you know my kids are went to the school. My son graduates, thank God, tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> barely, barely, but he graduates tomorrow. My daughter graduated a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. so. Um, and I may have a dog that you may hear bark from time to time. So um, <laughs> I have three dogs. Um, but I, I look forward to, to continuing the relationship, the positive relationship. Um, you know, there's a few things that have bumped up over the years since mm -hmm. I've been involved. You know, the, the lights, uh, we had a recent issue. I'm sure it may be brought up later on. Loud music. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I, the one thing I always hear, you know, locals say they love going to like the basketball games, you know, because they can get a, a quality, high caliber, like a college game almost. And because of the, you know, the, the high caliber program that you offer and uh, they love going to see that. And a lot of locals like to go in there and that you open the doors, maybe not this year, but you open the doors to the public and uh, they love it. And, and they they talk very highly of it. And I've never really seen, you know, issues. I've been on Main Street, and you know, I couldn't tell you if it was a a, a local kid or a Tilton school kid. I, I couldn't tell you that, you know. And uh, and I think that's a great thing. Um, you know, they're not like being singled out. You know, they don't unless they're doing wheelies, but um, <laughs> then they're guilty by association. But um, but yeah, I, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to see. What it has, unfortunately, haven't been able to take advantage of the uh, to see the renovations going on. Yeah. Um, but um, and I'm sure Pillsbury Lane would be a bundle of fun to discuss. <laughs> so my statement is basically for the public. Um, I, I don't really think I need to make an introduction to Mr. Thiel as I um, work at the school and have been there 20 years. So. Um, I've been in his office, not because I was bad, but because we had to, we had to discuss business. <laughs> that was um, all and, about it. <laughs> and, and school overall. Um, so, you know, it's it's um, it's good. I, 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 um, I'm happy in terms of um, being on the select board to be able to be the conduit with the school and represent the, as, as a select board representative, be able to 
um, continue to foster the really, really good relationships that the school has had since since I've been here. Point of trivia, uh, Mr. Ruggles and I went to the same high school. Um, we overlapped by one year. Yes, correct. He was a ninth grader and I was a twelfth grader. I'm the I'm the elder statesman. So, <laughs> but we can see he he did better than I did. <laughs> <laughs> How thick is Adam Pulley file? No. <laughs> he was in my office because I was in trouble. <laughs> oh, right. Well, I do share a birthday with him. We do. We do okay. share a birthday. But he's older. So, by one year. Okay, you're still I older. assume Mr. Ruggles is older than everyone. Okay. <laughs> no. Uh, nope. 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 I think I'm the surprised. oldest. I think I'm the oldest here. <laughs> So anyway, I'm John Scanlon, and uh, actually I married into the Knowles family back in 87. I have my two children, Knowles descendants, and uh, so um, I moved here to Tilton back in uh, 94 from Knowles Farm. Um, you know, that we really appreciate the school. Uh, they're a great employer. I also work doing the fire alarm inspections up there, so mm -hmm. I've been in many places probably you haven't been yet yeah, I, um, I don't doubt that <laughs> yeah up in the, whether the steeples or the clock towers yeah, yeah. um down the tunnels in the basement and mm -hmm. the bowling alleys and all that stuff the bowling and, alleys. Uh, yeah there are two yeah. bowling alleys yeah, yeah. and uh <laughs> two lanes rather. yeah two lanes. <laughs> yep. and uh um in fact your maintenance staff it's refers to me and calls me Batman, um, because <laughs> I go up and the, there are a lot of bats yeah. up in the belfry and they chase <laughs> me regularly through the building. Um, I mean, yes, uh, you know, the, the students there have always been very helpful and polite and I have to interact with them, um, setting off alarms and everything. They never complain. They're polite. Um, they're great. You know, it's a Tilton school and what Charles Tilton did was a great asset for this community. And uh, we really appreciate and welcome aboard and to our Thank town. You. Yeah. Thank you. All right. I have one more question. Sure. Do you have the big tic-tac-toe boards in the office? Did There are large. They're about uh, 16 inches wide tic-tac-toe boards in the main Skinner Tower of our main academic building. I don't know whether those are the same ones, but there are two of them. They're wooden. Yeah. Made those. Oh, really nice. Selectman Constantino and Mr. Thiel, you have a shared love of woodworking. Oh, yes. You, yes, he, Mr. Mr. Thiel, I will reveal this, has brought all of his phenomenal woodworking equipment to the school and has set it up and has a woodworking shop there. Yeah, it's um, it's a full scale industrial woodworking shop now. So yeah. Oh, I'm yep. jealous. <laughs> I will, I will take a picture. Okay, hold oh, up your fingers. Oh. Yeah, I still, it must be good. I have a saw <laughs> stop, so have, that helps. I have a half of one that yeah. sort of, uh, after 40 years, so that's pretty good. I haven't had much time to be in there this summer, but, or this year, but um, I'm hoping to spend some time this summer. But the story behind that, he's, he wanted them, and I made them for him. Uh -huh. But he had them in his office, and I said, well, why would we have tic tac toe board? Well, so when the kids come in, they always were nervous talking. Mm -hmm. So it was, they fiddled with them and they would open up. Mm -hmm. So I would, I said, oh, okay. That's great. Well, I, I took him to his other office. A great project that he helped with with our ninth graders in our ninth grade program is that they made um, cornhole boards. There were groups that made cornhole boards I with different that. designs. I don't know if you saw I them. I saw that on Facebook. Yeah, awesome. I'm on their page. Just, yeah, I just awesome. I loved it. Awesome. Is that your workshop? Because the, the, I did make a comment The shop on you that. see in those photos is, 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 is all the tools that I brought this for you. It's not quite set, fully set up yet. I did but, make a comment. Wow. <laughs> We've come a long way. <laughs> It's it's there you know there's a saw stop a 14 inch bandsaw jointer planer router table drill press and then um, years ago I had a flood and I lost my whole workshop to a flood so but I was insured so all my um, all my power hand tools are real high quality great industrial all in a set oh, it's so, the best yeah. tools yeah yeah, yeah. I, it's, I saw it yeah. so it's it's a nice job so. There's a welder. Mine, there don't too come as well. to mine. Mine is very low class. 
working class. <laughs> he makes good stuff, though. Yeah. yeah, but I work for mine. Your yours is like. That's okay. What's mm -hmm. the what's that guy's name on TV that sets it all up and he just takes out a tool and makes it? Five minutes later, it's all done. Oh, Norm Abram. Norm yeah. Abram. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but that's like Bob Ross in painting. I mean, he, <laughs> he makes it look so easy. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, three hours later, you're still trying to work on a tree. A happy, <laughs> so. happy little, <laughs> got a happy little lathe. Yeah, so. Just dab that's one tool I do not know how to use. Yeah. No, no good on the lathe. So. Oh. Oh, I have a mini one. However, but I would really love to come over and see it. Someday. Yeah, you're welcome to come by and see it. Uh, there are a couple other renovations happening on campus this summer. Um, we're we're doing a, a, a large scale renovation to the dining hall as well. Mm -hmm. um, we are um, building a pavilion in what we call the back 40, the, the, the fields behind campus. And then uh, one renovation that you'll be able to see from the main street of town is there's going to be a large amphitheater mm -hmm. um, built into the hillside next to what um, what most people think of as alumni hall. It's Hamilton oh, Hall. Yeah. Um, so where the swimming pool used to be, <laughs> that will be this sort of stage area for a, a, an outdoor amphitheater that'll seat about 240 people. So, um, and all of those projects are expected to be completed this summer. Now I have to ask, because you brought that up, um, are you going before the town for that? Because uh, um, we have a we've had a noise issue recently mm -hmm. there, and I don't know much about an amphitheater, but again, it's outdoors, yeah. and All I, I don't know if they can use sound systems or. Um, I don't believe there's any uh, built-in sound system for that at, uh, that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, but I know that it's gone through the permitting process and all that. So. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I just, I mean, we have we have an issue that it's not a music venue or anything. No, like that. no that's why. No, 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 no. Well, I think amphitheater. I'm thinking like Red Rock outdoor, classes, outdoor you know. teaching space, uh, yeah. perhaps some meetings, things like oh. that. So. Four <laughs> score and seven years ago. It's about it. Experience. Oh, just... <laughs> oh boy, Mike Landrush. Yes, that could happen. So is the is the, the the recent issue that was brought to our attention is that being addressed? Is that I spoke to our athletic director today about that, and she um, is thinking about a couple different solutions. Some of them sort of personnel related, some of them sort of equipment related, and and restricting access to equipment. Uh, we we don't anticipate having more problems on that front, um, but uh, teenagers. Are teenagers and sometimes they defeat all the measures we put in place so we're going to um, keep mindful of it and uh, and um, and put these new measures in place and, and go from there because i'm sure we're going to have to report back to the to those neighbors and mm -hmm. and they involve a meeting at a future date but yep. um as i say i'm i'm a neighbor i hear it i don't hear it i hear it yeah yeah you know but I, it doesn't Personally, it doesn't bother me. Mm -hmm. um, Once you there. get it figured out, if you yeah. could reach back out to the people, the residents, that would be great. Good idea. Yep. Yeah, I mean, communicate with them, and uh, I think making sure they get heard is important. Very important, and that's worked in the past. I was, I was just going to say that um, one thing that works really well in Tilton and we found is communicating with the townspeople and the neighbors and all that, it, um, you know, and through the steps. Mm -hmm. And they've all been really good at with us doing that. We've had numerous different issues and uh, sometimes it takes a lot of different meetings, but getting the input is oh, yeah. real big yeah. and uh, they appreciate it and it, mm -hmm. it makes better cooperation with them mm -hmm. and you. I, it's a it's a great example too of um, my dean of students. Uh, you know, sometimes says that um, people forget that relationships can be built during difficulty, <laughs> just mm. as well as during uh, good times. And and it's a it's a it's a good example of mm. that. Is you know the the response to that kind of issue is is um, an opportunity to build a relationship, even though it's over a, a tougher topic. So. Anyone else have anything? No? All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Thank and you. Thank you for coming in and saying hi. Listening.
appreciate it. We uh, we'll see we you hope to, yeah we hope to see you around. <clears throat> you know, well, yeah. Uh, just to let you know, the um, I don't know if you experienced it last year, but the uh, Island Park series is coming back. Mm -hmm. Um, so on the island, so catch a concert there. You might catch a. I don't know if he's doing hot dogs this year. Grab a burger. Okay. I'm the burger guy. Yeah, he's, sounds he's great. The bur he's the burger meister. <laughs> My wife and I have just started, uh, our, you know, to strategize on how we're going to get to, you know, rotate through every restaurant in town every day of the week over the course of the summer. We're hoping to not cook at all, you know, <laughs> and, and just go to the restaurants. So. so they're all good. They're all, they're all very good. <laughs> all good. You can say that. Yeah. I could say that. <laughs> That's it. It's uh Great experience, great culinary experience. We could have like a little, we could take one of the, the buses and maybe do like a little dinner tour. Oh, no, it's not a bad idea. Yeah. Designated driver. <laughs> I could designated. be a designated driver. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I, you I, know. yeah, yeah. And I don't drink, so I could be a designated driver. Think about there you that. go. We'll have to think about that. Start at one end of town, start yeah. with a movie maybe. and. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, thank you very much. I really thank appreciate it. Thank you very and, much. Uh, thank have you. a good evening. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Stay safe, as they say. I'm just going to make one quick announcement. Um, not sure if everyone heard yet, but the governor has announced that the state of emergency expires tomorrow at midnight. In case you didn't know, the state of emergency still exists. It ends at midnight tomorrow. Oh. Like a news reporter. All right, uh, selectman's reports. First up, John Scanlon. Hey, well, I'll start with um, a couple things going on. The uh, 2021 Plan New Hampshire charrette that was scheduled for uh, June 14th, 16th, 19th. Um, it's going to be postponed until September 24th and 25th. Um, so you can also, if you want any more information on that, I, I believe we've got stuff on the website about it and um, like input on that. Some of the other things, it was a busy weekend. Um, Northfield and Tilton, they did the trail cleaning. Um, some people came through uh, from Northfield and met up with uh, myself and there was, uh, well, there's two or five of us that cleaned all of the, and weeded all of the gardens alongside um, the Salmon, uh, Salmon Run <coughs> and uh, cleared all the leaves and brush and everything out of there. I want to thank Kevin. He did a great job. He went down there and picked up the piles of all of the stuff that was a large amount. It was probably a truckload. Um, and he also dropped off some um, mulch. I don't know if anybody noticed big piles of mulch in there that's um, going to be spread in amongst those, um, the gardens there to make them look nice. There was some, um, also the, um, all of the perennials along the fence were flagged with like, you know, little wires with yellow flags on them to help Kevin and the crew so they can, identify you know it's hard to tell what's a flower and what's not i i myself have cut down some perennials by accident so but uh yeah that's so that got done um, i'm hoping this weekend to start out and um, wash and wax uh, squantum uh, starting saturday morning bright and early um, get a, give them a good wash and then uh, hand wax them with the you know all the proper stuff and proper cleaners and all that so that should be fun uh, so can wax and I'll, I'll probably be doing all the upper part but if somebody wants to help out they can wax his legs or something well but, how early is early john when you know my early it's okay. seven eight o'clock anyway that's you know because yeah. uh, maybe i'll come down and uh, yeah. wax his legs <laughs> yeah <laughs> Down the so, I got a bad visual. <laughs> I can get the zero and all that too, you know, on the ball. Um, so, and let's see, I think that's um, pretty much it for me. Just quantum. 7 8 a.m. 
All right, we'll see how the day goes. All right. Anything else? That's it right. for me for now. Anyway. Thank you. Thank you, John. This week. Pat. Um, <clears throat> I just have one. Well, I have one non-public, um, but I have um, just one. I'm meeting with uh, town administrator, both town administrators in Northfield and um, Sambaton for the MOU. Uh, one, uh, Northfield is Friday and uh, Sambaton is, I believe, next Tuesday. I got to confirm that with her, but definitely Northfield Friday. Very good. <clears throat> That's it. That's it. All right. Scott Ruggles. Uh, so I'm going to ask everyone to take a copy. Um, this is out of budget committee last night. There's a request from the budget committee uh, on the um, job description um, uh, for the uh, budget committee secretary to strike one word. Um, if you notice under the section supervision received, um, the committee has asked to strike the word chair in the first line. Um, the consensus opinion was the fact that the, the, the secretary works under the supervision of the committee, while there will be on the second line, if you look at there's there's consultation to the chairperson and the finance director. Um, they, they, the, the feeling was, and I know Jeannie was on the call as well, but not to put her under the gun. The feeling was, is that to, to have, um, it listed as only the supervision of the chair in terms of the wording that it that it um, makes it difficult to see it as sort of um, a, a committee based um, position. I guess was was if I'm expressing it the right way. I think. Uh, oh, are you so if you if I'm understanding that th this is. Um, this is a job description, and it would be a, somebody that would she would report to, and that would be the direct supervision would be the chair of the, historically, it's always been the chair that's um, designated to be the go-to person, if you would, that set up the scheduling, um, the hours that she would work or things like that. Um, I don't, I get where they're coming from, but wouldn't that also on the opposite side of the optics, how could you delineate all of them going in one way to her mm. and saying, I need this, I need this, I need this if they would go to the chair and then the chair would go to this person and then the chair would say the committee needs these things uh, like for instance setting up the binders when the when the outside agencies come in the the budget binders and things like that it would the john could probably speak to this better um we've been on the budget committee for many years it's always been the chair that's done this that that's funneled through the, the secretary. And that was where <clears throat> the folks were saying that it, it, that should be covered by line two with the duties of reform independently with consultation from the chairperson of the committee. So the, the feeling was is that supervision, that the, the, the term supervision would be the budget committee supervises this position overall a, as a committee. And one of the concerns was is say, if the chair is ill for three months, then you don't have someone who's direct supervision. It but would if, be the vice the, chair. So, but if the committee, if the committee is in supervision of the position, then it, it makes it easier in terms of that sort of piece. I've never heard of a committee being in supervision of one person. I mean. I mean, it's obviously it's up to the board, but it, when we put in duties are perform, performed independently with consultation from the chairperson, that's for the agenda, that's for the um, the hours and things that uh, letters being sent and, and things like that. After consulting with the, the committee, so in direct 
with the committee, then the chair would go to the secretary and consult back and forth with the with the the uh, chairperson. If the entire committee, even if the chair was out, it would you have a vice chair, which which would take the place of the chair. So that argument would still go to the vice chair. That's why you have a vice chair. But I, I mean, it's just it's a word. But <clears throat> are you going to get into trouble with everybody going to that one person and saying, "I need this, and I need this, and I need this"? My only thought. <clears throat> Anyone else, Joe? Um, I'm all for changing things up, but it does sound problematic at its base. Um, because it, to echo Pat a little bit here, all of a sudden eight people potentially uh, are coming at it giving their directions and maybe conflicting directions. Now everybody's in charge. You know, it seems like it could create problems. But if the biggest change is crossing, striking that word and everything else about what has transpired continues, I, I don't think that the budget committee uh, you guys were on the budget committee. How often did you interact with the secretary? You never did. The chair did. <laughs> but if you cross chair out, that's saying that they're now under the direct supervision. Potentially. Right. Potentially. You potentially are, but we never we never interacted with the secretary um, except to say thank you for putting things together for us. But um, I do have a thought. If the budget, if the budget committee is requesting this, um, I suggest that we do it. If it doesn't work out well, we can undo it. Just like that. I'm not against the budget committee. If they think that this is the way to go, more power to them. In the past, um, on the budget committee, we've had just different types of members that give different types of input. Some of them get more demanding for specific things that the rest of the committee doesn't even want. If you have it as under direct supervision of the budget committee, a member could go and start telling the secretary what they want them to do um, or supervising them, say, I'm your supervisor. I think we've all familiar with this a little bit. Um, okay, yeah. I hadn't thought of that, but yes. Yeah. And so it gets concerned that it's hard to keep somebody as a um, secretary on that. It's a very grueling thing. There's always these weird requests, or I want more information, or I don't agree with that. And I want when it's all funneled through one person and voted on what will be done. It's it works a lot smoother. Um, because there's a good number of members and. Uh, from all walks of life that it can get pretty demanding on and you can have people quit. That's why we had it as the chair to funnel through that way. Did you have something? I, I was just um, curious, Scott, because I didn't hear that in the conversation. Is there some reason that has there been a problem? I mean, I, I I just have to say I I agree with what I've heard so far. I do have a concern that you have eight people going to the secretary and giving direction when. Um, so I'm just curious: has there been a problem that this has come up? I mean, it, in the meeting last night, which was brief, um, I, I it was it was it was only brought up the fact that they felt that the supervision should come from the committee, not just the chair. That was the the argument that was put out. I would think that that would be the 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 communication then should be among the committee itself, then giving direction at one point all together when the it's committee a, is as right. a motion or a right. decision consensus. But I I, I do uh, uh, and I think I mentioned this. I do share concern that you'll have eight people going. Just like John said, 
Understood. They just asked me to bring it to this body. <laughs> yeah, I would. I would, I would. I would motion to keep it, it as is for now, and then see how it goes. Um, and uh, change it later at a later time if it if it's if it's necessary. But I would motion to keep. I don't it think we need a motion to uh, maintain the status quo. It's already the status quo. Consensus is to keep it the status quo. I have to jump into that one too. What John said, some people do get very demanding. Understood. Just the mailman. Yeah. Oh. We won't shoot the messenger. That. <laughs> well, then you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. So, yeah. um, so, second piece again, it echoes what I had talked about. I can't remember the last meeting, meeting before. Um, continuing to, there's continuing work on the roads. Um, the guys from the DPW were doing a good job with more crosswalks, um, and I know that'll continue. But just in terms of citizens, just keep an eye out for those guys. They're, they're working a little bit along the, the sides of School Street, I think, getting ready to pave School Street that the state is. So just keeping your eyes open for those guys because it's, it's, they're there and they're not always completely in the road, but it's close. Otherwise, that's it. Right. Thanks, Scott. Joe? Uh, I attended the meeting of the uh, Concord Recycling Cooperative and uh, <laughs> reporting back that uh, I was reelected to the operating committee um, and the um, on the joint board as well. Um, there's only three on the operating committee now and Tilton is one of them. So, uh, and I'm the, I think I said I'm the secretary. Um, that said, we had our annual meeting. Uh, Wheelabrator, who operates the trash to energy plant in, in uh, Pentecook, uh, has been sold to a company out of New York called Win Waste. Um, I don't know when that was effective, but it is. Uh, our contract expired with Wheelabrator, uh, expires on the, uh, at the end of next year, end of 2022. So we've got that amount of time uh, to either find another place to bring our trash or to, uh, you know, as independent towns and organizations, or enter into another contract. Uh, Win Waste has put approximately $5 million into upgrades at the trash to energy plant. And uh, they're going to be in business for a while because if they weren't, you know, they wouldn't be putting that in. Uh, there's a contract tentative contract proposal, it's just talk right now because we've got, you know, all this time before this comes up. Uh, but they want to renew for five years. And uh, yeah, I'll discuss the specifics of that when the time comes. Uh, the budget went up by $5,000, um, went down in some areas. I don't have the numbers right in front of me. It went down in some areas. Uh, when do we have a $5,000 addition, which is the bulk of the increase to get a liability policy through Primex, which we don't currently have. We're not running a liability pride, uh, policy right now. So. I just came on behind you. Mm -hmm. That time's up, right? <laughs> uh, uh, the the liability insurance it would cost five thousand dollars, but if somebody went into the facility and did something bad, uh, five thousand dollars would be short money. And that's it for that. Uh, next, uh, um, as most of you who will be listening to this know. Uh, trash is a contentious issue. Um, the nothing is costs are not going down, and how we get rid of our trash 
is uh, of importance to every taxpayer. It's one of the largest programs that we have, the collection and the disposal of waste and recycling in this town. We have new fees at the transfer station, effective July 1st, 2021. Um, I'm not going to read all of these, but they will be available on the town website. They'll be posted at the town transfer station. Uh, they reflect what it actually costs us to get rid of trash. So this is not garbage. This is not what you're putting out on the side of the road. This is what is brought to the transfer station mattresses, uh, wood, propane tanks, batteries, things like that. Uh, it's not free to get rid of them. So uh, we have decided to raise the price to get rid of these things to reflect what it really costs. So check the town website for the exact list, or I'm sure if you go to the Public Works Department, they'd be happy to uh, give you a copy of the information. Lastly, uh, but not leastly, uh, I'm so happy to announce that the concert series at the island in Tilton is a total go. Uh, it begins on the 4th of July, of all things. Uh, hopefully, they we'll have a wonderful day and I'll be there making uh, cheeseburgers and hot dogs, so come on down. And that's the end for me. All right. That's awesome news. Thank you, Joe. Mm -hmm. Very excited. I think we should end it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, on a high note. Um, the only thing I have, um, I think you just answered my first question, though. We begin the resident sticker program on July 1st or June 1st. Where the where the the stickers are handed out by the. I'm sorry. What was the question? So the the resident stickers that we discussed, where they're going to be writing the license and handing them out when people register the cars for the transfer station. When did that begin? I'm not sure that that was. Um... Did we start June first? Was it July first? Must be July. July Must be July first. Okay. I know it's mandatory, but I'm talking about, I thought part of the plan was that when you go register your car, you get your sticker. Oh, we haven't done that at Town Hall. Yes. At the highway, we have done it. Okay. But not at Town Hall because we have a separate sticker. Right. Okay. Correct. Okay. Then I will refrain from commenting further. Okay. Um, did you hear... Gene, this is a question for you because I, we I heard about it at the fire commissioner's meeting about um, a, a state project on Route Three along the river. Have you been informed of that? On the uh, between um, Salmon Run and the Cumberland Farms Railroad along the river there. No. Okay. So apparently, there's a project coming that um, they're gonna, it's gonna be a lane closure. Um, and I don't know what power we have. It's supposed to start in September and take 30 days, but to get that to start at night, not during the day. The road will be shut down to one lane. Yes, they're, they're um, reinforcing the bank and gonna move telephone poles and move it in so that if the river runs amok, it doesn't take out Route 3. Chief Citar brought it up at the fire commissioner's meeting the other night. Yeah, yeah. now this is ringing bell. He did mention something okay. to me. I don't know if the state's that. contacted you, Yeah. but I, I, I he briefly mentioned that. He, he did mention that to right. me. I don't recall uh, getting any notice. Okay. Because they're concerned about emergency vehicles accessing. It, it's going to be, it's, from what I understand, it's going to be shut down the one lane. So I don't know what influence as a town we can say we want this project to be. I mean, the traffic's just going to be, it's going to be backed up to. I'll, I'll follow up with uh, the yeah. DOT. Okay. 
That was all I have, and I am. You've been waiting five years for that. No, I wrote that on your hand. No, no, I, I, I just didn't know, and I didn't, I hadn't seen it, and that's, I'm not trying to stir the pot, but we. Except for you just did. Well, I, I, we <laughs> just have to worry. I, I think as a town, we have to worry about quality of life and traffic backed up going down Main Street is going to affect the Main Street businesses. Traffic backed up the other way is going to be, affect residents and emergency vehicles, whether it's a police car, an ambulance, a fire truck, a tow truck, anything coming back and forth. Um, this? There's no easy answer to that question. No, no there's not. That's, but... a, that's a, a hazard, a danger, and uh, I... you could hit those guardrails and keep right on going like oh, you weren't even there. I get it. Um, John. Yep. That road. <clears throat> that's the, that's the idea is to protect the road. Much worse consequences. Oh yeah, no, no. But the idea is that they're going to try to save the road. I think the nighttime, uh, you know, request is totally a good one though. Yeah. Just, um, I am going to hand the reins over to Pat because I have to uh, go to awards night. All right, enjoy. Thank you, and I'll find out if you guys are still in session. If Thank you. When it ends. Thank you, guys. Okay. Now we can talk about him when he's gone. Do I want to sit up front? Oh. <laughs> Um, next on our list is a, a lieutenant. Yeah, I, I did uh, text him about, if you heard my phone go off when I was messing with it, um, I, I texted him um, probably 10, 15 minutes ago to let him know we were running ahead. So he, he responded, but how much time? But can we take your uh, report? Yeah, because the yeah, yes. Parks Commission's not all here yet either. Yes. Okay. I, yes, I can do my report now. So you all got a copy of my report. Um, we uh, have still outstanding pets in the workplace policy. I sent you all another copy of it. I think I provided you a hard copy in your packet and want to find out how you would like to move forward on this. Who would? How do you want to move forward? I, I just saw it now. Who? This is the final draft. So, yep. Last week when I gave it to you, uh, everybody said they wanted to uh, take another week to look at it. So, um, Abe is here. If you want to switch back to Abe, we can. You want to do that? You want to switch back to Abe? Ooh. Okay, so let me just um, kind of give you some background on this. So as I've been in this position for a little while now, one of the things I have noticed, and I'm sure this board has probably noticed with the officers, is they're always constantly hitching up their belts because all that weight that's around their belt. And I have heard um, some comments about the impacts on um, their, you know, the spine there because of the weight. And apparently, um, Lieutenant Gilman, a year or so, maybe longer, had done some research on an outer carrier vest um, that the officers would wear and put all their equipment inside so that it would evenly distribute the weight around their chest and back area versus being all on their hips. And so um, I asked him to uh, meet with the board tonight and kind of give a de demonstration and a discussion about this because I think uh, it is something that the board might want to consider. So I got a brief description of it uh, not too long ago, so we asked Abe to come in. So go, go ahead, Abe. Well, I was going to have a, uh, a model, model this for you guys tonight, but I know it's a pretty busy night tonight. We have a lot of uh, things. You guys have a lot of things to cover. So I think it would, was better if 
more of a hands-on approach to pass it around and see what we're looking at. Um, the first, the first thing I wanted to go with was just to kind of you guys can feel what a duty belt feels like fully loaded. Um, just to say that is one thing. To to really feel it in your hand is another. So if you, if you would, this is this is mine. It might be a little less than somebody else's, but that's 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 about so every 10, 12 hours. That's what you're. That's what you have on your hand. My tool belt. 15, 20 years. Some guys. Um, I know Chief Goldstein was telling us that he had gone to, um, and it, you know, it, it had some X-rays done, and he said his hip was lower than the other just from the belt. Years and years of wearing a belt. So yeah, that's that's every day. And so I when you, my tool belt. so that was the thing with, uh, with with when Jeannie had come over, she had noticed that um, everybody was kind of doing the dance. We call it. You, you grab <clears throat> grabbing your. You're grabbing your belt and you're doing the this all the time, this, and it's usually the vest sometimes, but, and that's kind of the reason also. Um, it's because it's a lot of pressure in all your areas. You're not supposed to wear that on your, that much weight on your hips all the time. Um, it should be on your core. Uh, when you train, you do anything like that, it's your core. This is your, this is, your, this is where you carry your load is on your chest, your, this area, your back really, really strong, not, not your hips. So what they come out with, you see a lot of departments uh, all over the country came out with what's called a uh, outer carrier. And so what it is, is it's the ballistic panels that um, go inside of the vest. Um, they pretty much just go inside here, front and back. So the ballistic panels that we wear underneath of our underneath um, our uniforms mm -hmm. come out. All they are is a, a carrier is underneath this. So what I have here is a carrier, and those ballistic panels are inside. So what you're doing now is you're taking those ballistic panels, you're getting rid of this carrier, and now you're putting it on this where you can put it on. You would wear it now on the outside. So you have it like this. All right. What this does is takes off a majority of the weight from your from your duty belt. So if you can see on the duty belt here, you have your taser, um, your firearm, and all the other stuff actually will go nice on this. Um, going through all the research stuff, you really don't obviously want to move your firearm from, from your way or from your hip. Uh, same with taser. They do, because you can train, um, and if people maybe will have the option, but it's really up to the firearms instructor um, if you wanted to, to draw from here. But when we came up with it, we were talking about it a couple of years ago. We want it, we would like, if we were going to present it, we want it to be clean. We want it to look still like a shirt. Um, in a sense, there's there's two other options, as you can see by the, they call this Molly, um, the webbing here, and that's what these connect to. But keep it clean on the lower half. You still have your, your name tag, you, the pockets here, and then also your, your badge up top. Um, with, with the way that you kind of have this set up, uh, we would, have some kind of a, a policy or proceed to, to not add more on there because we don't want it to be almost militarized and you have all these pockets and patches and everything. Um, when you when we when we tailored it, there's a drag handle that goes on the back. We we remove that. There's a couple of the things where, like I said, with the molly goes all the way to the top, and it just adds or gives people the impression more stuff needs to go there, so they put it there, which it doesn't need to be. Um, you can get most of your weight off your off your waist by putting putting the stuff in this lower half. Um, this is the same maker, this carrier here is the same maker of our, our vests that we have underneath, which is body armor. Um, and at this time, when we were looking at them, I think we only had like three or four people that have had switched over to the body armor vest, uh, the new the new vest. So it would have been significant to, to do it then, a, a, a great cost. Now that it's been a couple of years, um, I think everybody, but maybe three or four that need vest anyways, um, don't have the um, the new the new ballistics, so it would it would be it would be less. Uh, so for just the carriers themselves, for about about $180 for the carriers. Um, that's the outers, and then you have the pouches. Each one is ranges $37, $27. But these can be taken off interchange. You can wash this. Um, but what it does is so typically you would wear your duty belt. You'd have your your belt. Uh, I mean, you'd have your 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 gun, your taser, um, and then on the you would kind of put the stuff here, but during the day, you'd be able to take that off. So you go to a call, you're sweating, anything like that. Right now, I'd have to take this shirt off, take my vest off, take my belt off. With this here, all you would really do is once you come back to the station, you could pull this off, it would be removed. You could be in your, your white T-shirt. You can go in the locker room, you can change. Or if you're sitting there doing paperwork, you can throw it on quick. Um, 
many options uh, with it. And it, it's just, it's a nice feature. It takes, again, it, it, the, the majority of the people that are going through it is because it takes the weight off of your hips. So. I have two questions yep. for you that you haven't covered. One is where would the body cameras be secured okay. to it? Because it's, this is outer, yep. out, outside. Yep. So right now we, we have a mount that goes on the collar of the body cameras. Uh, it's magnet and it goes around. The new body cameras that they're actually discontinuing the the cameras that go here um, on on the lapel because they have a lot of wires and then that plugs into the battery. It's going to be more compact. I think we bought a couple. The select the, the select board have proved a couple in the very beginning for the detectives that are, it's enclosed. It's all in one. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll, we'll go that. You have a couple options. Um, they'll the, the company will actually cut out a spot where you could slide it in this pocket and it would be a circle and it would look out the circle. You can mount it here underneath. It'd be a magnet on one on the back side, and then the front, the, the body camera itself would have a magnet. So it can shoot here. Um, you can have a lapel. It, it, there's several options for that. Um, if you wanted another mount, it would come up on the it would go up on the top right here. So um, th those are all those are all options to make sure the body cameras uh, works good with that. So and my next question is this outfitted the way you have it now mm -hmm. where your gun and your taser would still be on your belt yep. the way you have it outfitted now right now what's the price range of that per person per person right there sitting there would be without the ballistics you're looking at about 270 but with the ballistics um our vest I, which there are some people that I right now that, that need, yep. that we know we need I, updates. Yep, too. and I know we're in the process of doing that. We haven't called mm -hmm. to find out what they are, but I know the vests go to about $800 a piece. I think that's right. what we pay. Um, so you're looking at about um, the people that don't have it, like I said, $270, mm -hmm. $300. Um, and then obviously the people that don't have the vest and need to get the whole package, you have to pay the $800 plus the thing. So. Are you asking this for patrol only? Yep. Or uh, patrol and sergeant. Yep, patrol and sergeant because uh, obviously the sergeants are out out, out, out with the uh, patrol during the night, during the day, and obviously our policy kind of mimics. You want to be, you kind of want to look the same. Um, administration, myself, I would just be wearing the, the suit. So, uh, yeah, this is definitely just for patrol to help them really just take the load and, and, and be able to help all the people that have back issues. Um, I know there's several people that complain, including myself. Um, I didn't go to the gym as much. I probably would complain even more. But. Uh, Jeannie, is there a, a, a thought process on where we would get the money? Uh, yeah, I, I would uh, talk with. Yeah, it does. I would talk with because uh, you didn't feel Tim that with about best. that I mean, to see yeah. where we might, and also look at if there's any grant funding out there. That'd be my first step, and then second would be to see what the what we might be allowed in the budget. Obviously, you know, from my perspective, uh, it, it it's I think it's money that would be well spent because we would it'd be the avoidance of worker comp costs possibly in the future. Oh, uh, you you just learn to deal with it. I mean, that's the hardest part. Is I can run with this. It would be like having a, a weighted pack on my chest, in, like the military. Um, that because it's more contained. You can, if you're running, you can kind of keep it together. When you have it on your belt, you see, like in cops and all the movies, they're running. They're trying to hold the side. Well, I was kind of thinking the belt. Yeah, the belt. That would be yeah, easier. that would be great. But the belt is just. Well, you clink, still clink, got clink. a gun on yeah. your hip, right? Yeah, you'll still have a gun, but. I mean, obviously that takes off, majority of the weight is already off. Um, and it's just, it's just going to be able to maneuver the things, uh, you know, jumping over, you're not just running. Uh, majority of the time we're jumping over walls or we're going through the woods or it's, it's more obstacle course um, with that on. So I don't know too many obstacle course that do the weighted belts. <laughs> Mostly obstacle course, the guy, they'll do like the weighted packs. So um, I think it's just, it's just the old school way they did it. It's just obviously the, the issue is, is, um, you need to make it look nice. You need to keep it nice. You need to take care of it. You need to wash it. And that's all things that we would we would do in the police department with with our you know um, SOPs and everything standard operation, uh, operating procedures that you need to um, make sure everything's clean. Same with your cruiser. Same with your your uh, do, your leather gear. It's the same way. Um, so that's pretty much. Any other questions? Really? 
John, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm um, doing construction stuff, and I know the weight of having your tool belt, and you just can't wait to get that thing off, and you're always like, try to pull your drawers up and you, you yeah. adjust your belt and twist yep. it, and, and uh, you know, even if you have to use a bathroom or anything, you, you know, all that stuff, it's, it's a hassle, and people who have a lot of weight on their belt, they have back problems, so they have to get special suspenders to attach to the belt to go over their shoulder to take the weight off which is a great relief. And that's pretty much what that is. It takes the weight off of, you know, hanging on your hips like that. And uh, yeah. I, yeah, that's that's awesome. Uh, my one concern would be is if you have it off, um, what would the uniform look like? You know, if you're around here and if uh, somebody's like coming through or something. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so what it would be, you wouldn't see a shirt like this. These shirts are typically pretty, you guys get the bills. They're, they're not cheap. They're polyester. They're mm -hmm. really nice. They're business shirts. I mean, they're, they're LAPD blue, whatever. Um, the shirts that you would go with, um, I've, I've got a couple different variations. Uh, one is through like a 511, which is a um, tactical company. It's, a, it's typical polo is what it would look like. So it would, it typically when you have this vest on, it would look just like this shirt on. But when you take it off from here down where that vest is, um, right when it ends and you can see it's it's almost like a, a mesh or like a, 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 mo a moisture wicking shirt is what it is. So it's really light, but you still would have your patches on both sides. You still would have the collar. Um, you could do something more like a polo. They have the polos, but they look professional. They would have the lapels, some of them. Um, and then the, the pants, A, you can stay with a, with a polyester pant like we have, or you can go to more of a, um, you know, a, I would say, I wouldn't say tactical, but a, you know, a more comfortable pair of pants that uh, maybe have like some, I say like material that stretches a little bit easier. How about winter? What's that? How about winter? You know, would you long sleeve? Long sleeves, it would be the same exact kind of shirt, just switch mm -hmm. over to long sleeve. So the same wicking and then they change the material. So it's not as much wicking. You can get like a cotton or a wool or a blend. So it's a little bit warmer. Um, but all these companies have this because they've a lot of departments have gone to it down south, out west, stuff like that, where it's really hot. Joe, go ahead. Um, now we're talking about something beyond the scope of that vest financially, because you're talking about replacing all the uniforms for the police department at once. And what does that cost? Yes. So that would, and again, um, do you have to switch over to the shirts right now? No, you don't have to. We can make make it work with the, the shirts that you have, and we can figure out some option with that. Um, but that would that would be something that you would definitely have to, would have to look at. And slowly, every year we get uniforms. That's part of the union contract. Every year we get uniforms. As you you roll over, maybe you buy everybody a pair or a set or you somehow work mm -hmm. it with the uniforms we have now. Mm -hmm. um, and then the following year, we blend those in. I can tell you right now, it's half the cost of what these shirts and mm -hmm. these pants. And that's what I was saying. These shirts are really expensive because they're really they're nice shirts. These are more um, not not in a different category. They're, they're, they're polos, but they, they're still nice material. They're just, I, they are the half the cost per shirt. Um, so eventually it will, it's just getting that initial um price tag and that's why we're saying grants or maybe donations because that's going to help take the load um right off the initial cost off the so that's something we'd have to kind of put the number fully together for you um and see yeah i need to know what it costs exactly. but it makes sense it makes it's total sense and how god do you have something to say lifespan lifespan of those it's like typically i would say on a vest like that uh two years um I think after that, you're going to start seeing some tearing, some ripping. I can look more into that at other companies or other departments that I've used um, and see how long they're vest. I know there's a, a couple of them in Maine, uh, a couple departments that have the ex exact same vest set up. I can ask them how long usually, but I would say with the material, it's a real thick material. Uh, it should last more at least two years. Um, do you need to maybe buy another one so you can go back and forth kind of deal, keep them clean, one's being washed, you have to switch out the panels. Um, those are those are all options. And again, before we end here, um, the main thing too, it goes with wellness, um, mental wellness, and just just if you're putting that belt on all day every day. And I, I know, hour four, five, six, it's fine. It's it's seven, eight, nine, ten. It's the last four, three, four hours. You're it's been hot like we like we've had. It's hot, and you're you're wearing a full belt. Can't be, you're not able to take that shirt off. You have to undress completely. 
Um, so the, the well-being and mental well-being is uh, almost top priority in the morale too. With the, with the and I think the long-term <clears throat> safety, coming from a world of climbing telephone poles and having to have a 50-pound tool belt on going up and carrying that around, the long-term safety aspects of your health, you know, you're not going to notice it now, but 20 years from now, carrying that every single day, you know, to your knees and, yeah. and whatever, it, you have to really think ahead of that uh, long term. Yeah, and I mean, it helps with the town too, with, with insurance and mm -hmm. money and stuff, if injuries, anything right. like that. And, you're, and you got something like that around your waist and you're running and chasing people, diving, you know, going underneath cars or... Exactly. There's all kinds of stuff. And then also come down to like even having to jump into the river. I've always, we always mm -hmm. have those scenarios. People are like, oh, I never really thought about that. Like if someone's in the river as you're driving downtown, you have to jump in, you have to do something quick. Um, that's going to sink you right to the bottom. Um, you can take that off a lot quicker, zip it, it's gone. Uh, yeah, you'll have the belt and the and the, the gun, but it's it's not like that. The, I could probably swim through that. I'll be fine with one on one side, so. Just I think get get the numbers together, uh, get the numbers, uh, the the count, the numbers. Uh, let Jeannie and Tim look through grants. I know the grants are out there for Vest. We know that because there's matching monies out there for them. We were in the program for a lot of years for that. And then um, figure out, um, you know, maybe come next week, or whatever, or the week after. What yeah. week after? Because we're not here next week. Right? in a couple of weeks and come back because it sounds like we're interested yep. to hear more. Great, great. Yep. I'll put would, it all together and get you a you know exactly mm -hmm. what it would cost and we'll go from there. Yep. Excellent. Thank you. Well, thank uh, you. Good yeah, presentation. Good. Thank you. you. Also, yeah, I'm good. Yeah. Did you have more questions? No, I'm good. I'm good. You sure? I, well, I just think in terms of that and when we're talking and you're looking long term, thinking about that rotation, thinking about <clears> that you have to rotate them out and, and wear and tear on the vest, but also on the, the uniform as well. I think when you think down the line like that, it then allows you to think ahead, budgeting to think ahead, et cetera. Yeah. So well, the, doing the all budgeting that. part in the uniforms is in the contract. Yeah. yeah. So we could c comfortably rotate that out within the contract. But in fairness to the officers, they have really not always adhered to two, 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 two. They've only bought when necessary yeah. over the years. I found that in the last 12 years, they've been very um, frugal, frugal. To, uh, to their benefit. I mean, to the town's benefit, they've been very frugal in that respect. I agree. I really do. I, yeah. I sometimes tell some of them like, hey, shirts, you know, from the, from the mm -hmm. flashlight, things like that, that will wear. I yep. mean, your mm -hmm. flashlight wears on the back of your shirt. It actually wears in the back from sitting in a car. Um, yep. and it digs and you know and that's another aspect of it all the weight and you're just getting into in and out of the there's loser. been one or two that so, we've asked to change out. yeah you have to you have yeah. to almost tell people like this puts hey, everything in the front for you guys yeah it puts everything right, right here Good. close to you um so easier access yep. Yep. training that you guys go through now updates it in terms of looking at that training stuff. and yep. it's safety wise also it's right here if you get into something you're you're down here when you you know it's close to your chest right let's get those numbers yeah definitely i'll get right on that all right Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Abe. Great presentation. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Yeah. And uh, with like 50 push ups. Oh, is that what you want? <laughs> <laughs> uh, next on our list is um, Parks Commission. So, Bob, you want to come up and the rest of us introduce who you have here. Come on up, push the button so it's green. Oh, this audio is oh, incredible. Yeah. If you have a voice. Okay. Good evening. I'm Bob Bahati. I'm the chair. With me is Ellie and Ann. And I can't pronounce either one of their last names, so I'll just call them Ellie and Ann. So. 
So I think one of the reasons um, we asked you to come in is to talk about, uh, to talk to you, uh, number one, about the ball field, right? Um, what your thoughts are, plans are, that kind of thing. Well, if, if and when the selectmen decide to turn it back to us, which we hope is in the short term, the long term, our plans are to solicit and try to get donations for leveling the field. We've got a couple estimates. I know Catherine can't be here tonight. She has uh, contacted two or three companies. I believe Jeannie has one estimate uh, uh, for leveling the field up. Once the field's level, our preference was to set it up for a softball field. The reason to set it up for a softball field is there's no pitches mound versus like a little league field or a baseball field, you got a pitches mound. So the field would remain flat so we could use it in the winter for the ice skating rink. Um, it could be used for if there was a pickup soccer game or something, if somebody, family group or something wanted to um, have a soccer game there, it could be a soccer game. We wouldn't have goals or any of that sort of stuff. We had also talked, um, I forget who it was, approached us about possibly around the perimeter of it, building a Frisbee uh, golf. Um, oh, the golf, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Disc golf. Dip, disc, disc, disc golf, golf. Thank right. you. Yes, with Frisbees. So um, we've, we've talked about that and we haven't looked into what sort of ranges or anything we need to get for that. But we, that was our plans and feel free to jump in guys if I'm missing anything, but we weren't going back to the football field for two reasons. One, if you create a football field out there, it's very limited scope for who can use the field. You don't have family groups picking up uh, football games at family reunions, birthday parties, so that you'll see them pick up a softball game, family reunion, birthday party, pulling together a so-called uh, softball game. Um, the other thing is the high school now is using their fields for football for their games. The only games the last year, and might have been the last two years, that was held at the uh, old football field was middle school games. And for three games a year, it just doesn't seem right to spend the money to develop a football field out there for just three games for the school. We felt that it was better to put a field together for the entire community that could <clears throat> use. So looking at the, um, Jeannie did share the survey results. And from what I can see, most people wanted it as a multi-use multi -use, right. field. And that was our whole feeling with the softball field. It would have to be uh, construction of a backstop along, probably along like 132 end of the field that you have uh, the bats backstop behind where home plate would be. But outside of some sand dust for the base running, that would be the only construction really that would have to be done after the field is completely leveled. So. Maintenance wise on the field, we'd still go with what we presently have with DP, uh, DPW doing the field mowing. I don't say the field, it's not irrigated. I don't see a need. We do have water here, but I don't see a need to go 
with in-ground irrigation. We've been able to keep grass uh, on the field without in-ground irrigation. I don't think we want to go that expense. And that also limits what you can do with the field if you put an in-ground irrigation because you got to know where those pipes are if you want to drive any sort of uh, stakes in. Like if we have a community oh. fair day and you have these pop-up uh, tents. That's why we get very protective down at Riverfront because we do have the in-ground irrigation there and we don't want to pierce some running equipment over the lines or driving stakes in. So that's pretty much a synopsis of what we've talked about at our commission meetings. And I'll turn it back to you guys. We're more than willing to listen to you and take directions from you. I don't, you saw the parking, Kevin's doing the parking. Did you see that out there? I, I didn't notice it, it today. We actually opted for quite a few extra spaces, spaces. since I'm making it smaller. So, because I know like when you guys had knocker ball and stuff like that, that would keep everybody, you know, it, it, in, yep. parked in one spot. Um, and it's, you know, I don't know if there was a miscommunication or anything, but wasn't that that we didn't want to turn it back over? We wanted to get the parking done and the building done, and then get it done. Of course, the, bills, the building is was a few months late, you know. <laughs> so everything's been like pushed, pushed out. out. <laughs> yeah, and I mean we're anxious to get something because back. You know, so you can. I mean the great things like the the knocker ball and and. I think the other part, and I think the other second will agree, is that if you still want to have an event, even though it hasn't been turned back, just go do it. We just want to you okay. know, get the parking done. We, so there's no we reason. We didn't schedule an Ackball not knowing this year, first off with COVID, it, how we were going to handle the Ackball. They, they weren't doing any events uh, oh, yeah. last year yeah, at right. all. So I haven't reached out to... Matt Milliken to even see if they're in existence again this year. If they're not, uh, we can look for other things. Um, two years ago, I know we had a Labor Day private dog show um, here. It was, it, the public could come and watch the dogs, but they couldn't participate. It was, a um, time trial uh, thing for members of the club and everything. So um, that had probably a hundred spectators and oh. 60 participants, I'm gonna say. And they did have uh, cars staged out on the field. Again, another reason for mm -hmm. not having the irrigation because mm -hmm. These dogs actually had to jump through the cars and yeah. it was amazing and everything. So, and we're always looking for community events. I mean, we're fortunate. I, I will say we have worked out with the town of Northfield on the riverfront uh, that we will be shooting off the fireworks that we postponed last year. Um, the only Downside is we had to go into July for those fireworks. So it's going to be the 24th of July and I'll be getting flyers out. And that was our next, to... that was our, our next discussion because we did uh, in pursuit of, of asking Northfield uh, the questions in having to pay for a detail and clean up and so on and so forth. Jeannie reached out to Jay Jill and having it over here at 132 or parking at 132 and having it over at Jay Jill and they said yes. Oh, great. So That's good to know. We could have, you could have had it at June 26th if you wanted it. Uh, we, over we can't get it June Jay 26th because uh, he's already booked Okay. on June 26th. The first opening he had is July 24th and I says we'll take it we'll uh, make it work then and everything I didn't so, know with your credit or whatever if it expired it, in it, it, 
he did say, well, I told you that I wanted you to use it by July 1st, but he says, I'm not going to hold you to that. He says, I just didn't want you to come back in December do you, and say you want the fireworks. Do you still have to pay in cleanup and all of that over at Northfield? From what Eric's told me, the police detail is free. We don't have to pay for that. Our public works is going to do the cleanup over there. So um, we don't have to pay for the cleanup. So heard that they added on the, the, hill, arch, the arch as well, too, that they want us to clean that up, too. Yeah, they've added it. So the second week they if, added in order to give us they, permission in order to, for us to get permission, they've added the arch to clean up as well. And the police, That's to my right. understanding, the police is not, the detail is not free. We have to pay for the detail. Was that my understanding last week? And that was right. kind of what I got out of it. Is that true, Jeannie? Unless something's changed, that was my understanding as right. well. The, the detail is not free. Well, it became Eric, a thing. <laughs> yeah, and that, actually, our got the information so he had been talking with them can we stick with the 132 field and then come back to this yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh well i was trying to yes we can i was just trying to figure out for fireworks because they have to make a determination because of the cost and then we have an option for uh, a site that would be free to you folks yeah it wouldn't it wouldn't cost you We'd have to clean up J. Jill, I'm certain. But I'm, so, I'm sure, yeah. But um, so at this point, just so I understand, I will let J. Jill know that it's not happening on the 25th to begin. It cannot with. happen 26th. Right. No. Okay. 26th. I'm sorry. So um, I'll just let them know that, and uh, you'll let us know. And any in any event, J. Jill is open to it, um, having it. So we could do it there the 24th. The I would need to ask for that date because we asked specifically for the 26th. So I'm assuming it's going to be okay. Um, one, a couple of things that they did. Um, one of our officers has been working on this and um, they had requested that two fire trucks be there and she's already reached out to the fire department and they're happy to be there. Uh, so it, it lit, lit, you know, all the logistics had been had been worked out for the 26th. Um, I'm guessing that they would be okay with July, but um, I'll I'll have to you'll have to tell us because ultimately it's a parks decision what you want to do with your fireworks. Just let us know and we can go back to J J L and we meet Monday. So. Um, is that soon enough time to go back to JG? Yeah, so what I'll do is I'll ask the officer to call tomorrow and say, if it got moved to July 24th, would you still be open to letting it happen there? Okay. I'm guessing that's not going to be a problem. Because it sounds like that's going to be the cheaper option for us. And well, it, it, it is. Uh, I mean, it's nicer at Riverfront because you've got you got the amphitheater effect. Right. Effect, but we have to um, now clean up the arch and Surrette, which is quite an area at, over at Surrette, which would take quite a bit of time. Um, I imagine it would take the day to clean up both of them with the DPW. I, I, so the man hours alone there would, you know, with the <laughs> three of them. And then we have to pay. I'm pretty certain that we all heard the same thing last week that Eric said that. Uh, um, we had to pay for the detail because we specifically asked if we could have our police officers go over. Right. Which would obviously the, be cheaper. The message she gave me over the phone was <coughs> we could not use Tilton PD. Right. But he says, I did work it out with Northfield PD and there'll be no charge for their uh, offices to close the Surrep battery site down for cars driving in and everything and that's what they were looking for they didn't want cars driving down and we don't want cars driving down to surrender right. so um right okay 
Um, but he didn't mention anything about the arch cleaner. Well, so. Yeah, unfortunately, he's at um, class night tonight. Class night. He just yes. left, so we'll get the answer to that. And then um, Jeannie will talk with Jay Jill, get back to you. Okay. And then Monday night, um, by the way, put me on the email so I'll know that Monday night is because I'm the alternate, <laughs> please. Let's talk about 132. Back to 132. Joe. I'm going to make a motion mm -hmm. to return the custody isn't the right word. To uh, management. Yeah, to, to give the 132 ball field back to the parks department to manage and uh, that's it. Okay. I'll say second it for the sake of discussion. So there's a motion on the table for the Parks Commission to take back the management and accountability responsibility for all right. Discussion. Um, and Joe, I, and Joe I make this I make this motion as the guy who has other thoughts about that ball field, but I have listened to what uh, uh, the feedback was from the public, and uh, <clears throat> I never had any doubts about the Parks Department's ability to deal with parks. That certainly wasn't my, my thing. But if we're going to have a ball field, we need somebody to manage the ball field. Uh, and uh, when that parking, that parking construction is done, I guess it's time to get at it. So um, for those who don't know me, uh, I'm Scott Ruggles, uh, the newest select board member. Um, so you know I'm very direct. Um, I am not at all a fan of a ball field going in over here. And I will give you um, a, a little bit of background on this. I came here 21 years ago with a child who was 20 months old. Um, since I gathered a few more children in my pack, five of them. Um, so it, ball field use is minimal. Softball field use is minimal. Um, knowing this was coming, I've done a little bit of my due diligence in terms of research over the past 10 days, the use of the Little League field. I know it's in Northfield. Um, Dwinell Field, there have been three people on it in the off times that I've gone by when it's non-Little League use. And passing by the softball field at the middle school numerous times in the last couple of months, other than the youth softball league, there is no one using it. In the municipality of Tilton, we have one slide and two swings for our children. One slide and two swings. That's it. That's Riverfront Park. There's multiple uses that we could have here that would fulfill vast need in this community for people to be able to walk around a track in good weather, um, possibilities of being able to find corporate sponsors to put in a, a, an extensive playground that families could come to. Probably one of the most safest playgrounds in the state because it would be monitored by the cameras that are on this side of the building that can read license plates in the parking lot over there. Some of the greatest parking. What a wonderful place to be able to host the farmer's market. Um, you, you have the potential here, instead of focusing on a very small percentage of the community who might use a softball field, to be able to open up to the large percentage of the community that could use it for multiple, multiple uses. Okay, um, I, I really am happy to hear that the fact that the football field was off um, because my son played as an eighth grader and it was, it was a three time a year use. Um, but if you were to get a multiple use facility, first of all, there, there would probably be a little bit less maintenance than on a softball field. You're going to have to replace the, the pitching rubber. You're going to have to think about the home plate replacement here and there. You're going to have to come back in and fill back in. You've got to think about, you know, weeding. How are you going to weed it? Um, th there's, there's multiple pieces that go into this. I have, if, if you can't figure out, I've got some extensive experience in athletics, athletic management, et cetera. So we as a community, really need to continue to think, and I'm not saying we don't understand that, we need to continue to think about when we are creating public spaces, public spaces that have a high percentage of population possible use. 
Okay. A softball field does not have that. It does not. Okay. A football field would only have three times a year. So if we are able to get a space that once we thaw out, okay, and we know I, I'll use March, that'll jinx us. It'll be June next year, obviously. <laughs> um, so, but, but um, yeah, something where we can open it up and be able to have some use from March all the way through till November. Um, you're, you're providing a sense of community that um, we, we foster here, but we can continue to foster by looking at that multiple use facility. I would love to be able to jump in and help. We can have discussions um, around possible corporate sponsors that we might be able to get come into this mix and be able to help us, especially, yes, I'm emphasizing a playground. By the way, I have no children who would use that. My, my youngest is 13. Um, so, but knowing that, um, knowing what we could do on this space that would make it a massive community space um, would be phenomenal. And I think it would, it would help a lot um, in terms of what we could do here. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. I appreciate your comments. I will say I live just above the middle school on Winter Street. So that field does get quite a bit of use uh, in the evenings mm. and stuff. Um, the other use that we used to see out here was two elderly gentlemen knocking golf balls around <laughs> out there. So <laughs> occasionally you'd walk around, you'd be find golf balls. We had approached several years ago, approached Farmer's Market about doing something out there. <clears throat> and they weren't receptive because it was a grass area. They wanted uh, either gravel or tar to set up on for mm -hmm. their displays and everything. The grass, they felt created problems. So that's why we haven't approached them in recent years or anything so um i guess with the playground one thing we would look at we we still haven't uh looked at the size when everything gets said and done we'll take measurements see what we need for the ball field it's possible maybe we could actually get the ball field and playground in there i know some people have uh, mentioned playground equipment, especially on social media, they were always looking for it, but we were approached, and I believe the board at Selectman was approached two years ago by a, an individual, a young girl. Um, softball. Softball. They're, they're... Looking for, or, because there are no, no softball fields right. open to, AAU softball. There, there are, well, the, we have two softball fields there, but the AAU softball brings an entirely different creature right. to AAU. the Valley. And Northfield, it looks like Northfield's looking at the development of Surrett Park with a softball field there right. as well. I, I just, they just had their first meeting last night. Yeah. yeah. So a, AAU softball brings a very, very different creature to the table. Very different. Okay. Because I guess uh, the high school fields so, are not available on, Joe. for... Billy's got his hand up. I'm going to open it up for Billy. He's had his hand up for quite a while. I but... can't see behind yeah. Hello. Okay, yeah. that works. Yeah. Hi, Bill Lawrence here, part of the Parks Commission. Um, I, I, of course, I missed what Bob had presented, but I just remember last time the, the Parks Commission really wanted that as a larger all-purpose field where you could do a, just really to make a flat space that could be open to many, many different uses. And I think it, it, we could develop it into other things like that too. But I mean, we were talking about, you know, having Frisbee out there, um, so pick up soccer games, uh, you know, just making a big space that could be, you know, reserved for different use by different groups, um, you know, knocker ball, stuff like that. But uh, I know at one point we had talked about um, the need for that softball field, but I was thinking that could be also just kind of blended in with a large all-purpose field. Um, but we can talk about that later. Thanks. Yep, Joe. Um, point of order. What we put on that field over there is not germane to my motion. 
Oh, you're right. Thank you. My motion is to turn in the, <laughs> the field over to the parks department. What actually goes on that field Absolutely. at that point would be ramrodded and masterminded by the parks department with input from, you know, to be honest, community. You know, I agree with you. Uh, I'd want to hold another more public oh, yeah. Yeah, information yeah. session before we develop any plans. Yeah out there but i mean the survey was nice but yeah. <laughs> very um, very limited very limited very, very limited and, <laughs> and uh I, I would like to uh call a question we have one more selectman uh, yeah on, on your to... point of order i understand but some people may want to vote one way or another if it means that they don't think the decision would be made based on uh, the whole community being involved in what is there so that that is why it's germane to it is if I was going to make if Bob said I'm going to put in a uh, or the a um, hundred and fifty thousand um, dollar football field right now I'd say no no I'm not going to turn them over right so that's I'd why never made the that's motion. why it's germane. <laughs> to the I get it. So I get this it. has come out so yeah. okay that's right. Oh, has, it is germane. I, okay I'm going to call a quick. I I, I may I? Um, I i agree and and the instant i I'm, i will be very candid because i have extensive knowledge the instant you throw aau softball into that it becomes financially limiting to participants it is extremely expensive in many of those aau things so you are going to have a very low percentage of people from this community who are would actually participate in that the fees for aau softball for a season can run anywhere from 600 to 3500 dollars for a participant and there is little financial aid okay. hmm. so it is it is a this is a when you get into the club type sports and looking at that as a primary use or a use for your facility you are limiting it and you are not going to be inc being inclusive of a of a larger majority of your population it is a it's a very 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 um uh, it, it's just thin ice that you're walking on in terms of being able to to be inclusive of people in the community it's very expensive those club sports sounds like he's a resource to tap into I, yes i okay. have a significant knowledge in all of it all right i'm going to call a question all those in favor of turning the uh, 132 ball field as we call it over to the parks commission uh for future management Aye. 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 Nay. All those not in favor? Nay. Nay. <laughs> All right. Motion passes. And just a little comment. Could Maybe we could rename and stop calling it the 132 ball field to the 132 parks field or recreation field or, or you know, something yep. like that. Yep. So it people... It, it sounds friendlier that you can do whatever you want down here that you know i like the idea of you know somebody coming in here playing golf i'd love to see a bocce court out there which it doesn't take up too much room that tournament maybe two bucks the, the italian and, you know, and but yeah i love the idea of you in. know you guys getting them back um the, have a great parking lot kevin's doing a great job out there it's good Lots of space. One, once he's finished, and now that we have uh, one thing I wanted to discuss with the commission is actually putting up a actual sign for the field and coming up with, I agree with you, that it should be like 132 town fields or town field or uh, 132 town park Actually, or something. So Town park's great. Uh, thank you. I know you made a motion to turn it over, uh, but you didn't give a date. And I'm curious, is this effective immediately or after the construction? My intent is done? was as of the vote. So effective immediately. In lieu of any other. Uh, I wouldn't have voted that way if I had known that. We've been talking about waiting until the parking lot's done after that time. The parking lot's not done yet, though. I know. 
You just well, said effective immediately. So I'm okay, well, effective at that time because it can't get in there. He didn't say that in his motion. No, I understand there was no date. That's what I'm asking for clarification. That was my intent. If you'd like me to make a motion to that effect, but my intent was. Uh, I think we need to wait for the parking lot to be finished. I, I mean, I think we think? all agree. Unless you guys that. want to do it. <laughs> He's still working on the pocket. I, I mean, like are you guys chomping at the bit so hard that you got to get out there this weekend? June 26th no, is no. our opening for our grand opening for the police department. I believe it's going to be finished by then, correct? The parking lot? Uh, yes. Yeah. So yeah, I think we, we really would. I was assuming with Joe's motion that <laughs> we in the parking lot. Yeah, the parking yeah. lot. I mean, that doesn't mean that we know it's coming to us. Yeah, so yeah. we can start planning, uh, planning, planning the future. And yeah, do some measurements out there, yeah. get some estimates and so forth. So yeah, go ahead, John. Bob, on the twenty-six, could we use your parking lot? <laughs> not on a parking lot. No, it looks it because, well, yeah. I, I would make a motion that upon completion yeah, of yeah. that the time frame for the uh, takeover for the parks commission on the on the um, town park town park one thirty two would be after the completion of the parking lot in our work that needs to be completed out here. So Jeannie can in, get in touch with Bob and let him know when it's completed. Hopefully it will be done by our, our opening uh, ribbon cutting. So who actually the owns the park or be in charge of the parking lot will be the PD. town still? The PD. The PD. It's a PD parking lot. Yep, it's a PD parking lot, but we'll be open to the public, correct? It's a public parking lot. Uh, I, the intent that no, it's for public correct. use. Right. I, I thought I just heard something that said it was there. Somebody asking okay. for permission to use oh. their parking lot. It's yeah. It's I think the, that was a joke. Oh, okay. I'm pretty okay. sure that was a joke. It's being facetious. Hold on a minute, yeah, no. Hold on a minute because. It is the police department parking lot. Uh, it I, so I'm just, I'm very confused about this because the intent at our town meeting was to develop, whether it be sand or not, that if there was a ball field that was created out there, whether or not it was a football field or anything, that the public would come in that way, even on our committees. The public would come in here and the public would be allowed to park on that side. Always, every committee that every committee meeting we've been on, the What's public, that? it shows the public parking right here, on that right? side. Yes, but Jeannie's saying that this is police parking, which yeah, means, it is. which means they can't so, nobody can park over there. Why? For the for the park. Why? Well, this this oh. is what because it's for the police. So for those spaces are not going to be taken up by police officers. There's a no, lot no, no, of no. them. No, no, no. It's it's for public, for the police, for people that come for training. Right. So for, for people training, that come for for select people meetings. that come to the park. Town of Tilton Why parking it? lot. Belongs to the town. Municipal parking lot. It is. I guess one County. question I would have is if it's a police parking lot, are they, is the police budget liable or responsible for maintaining that, plowing it in the winter? It's a town parking lot. My, so I, dif I differ in my opinion with Jeannie, and I'm sorry, I differ from that opinion because it's always been the intent of the committee to have public over here, which includes people visiting the park. Park. Which uh, which which committee? I'm just curious. The police study committee. Always, 
And even in our diagrams, it, it shows public parking over here, not just for police. And, and I, 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 I don't understand this. I don't understand. I think we're overthinking this. No, it's going to be parking places right there. Joe, the town. We're not overthinking it. Jeannie is of the thought process right here, right now, that it is only used for police, public police parking. I don't think she said that. Oh, she I is. think you said that no. it was part of the police department it property. Is. Correct. That's Not what that I said. It's only for police officers. That's what I said. It's part. So if somebody was coming to visit a game over at the park, they could park there. Well, first of all, uh, answer my, no, just answer no, my question. I am <laughs> answering your question. I am not a selectman here. I don't make those decisions. Um, my, I'm just telling you, my understanding is that the parking lot was built here. This gravel parking lot was part of the police department. If you remember, they were going to pave it and then it was too expensive. Right. And so we went back to our DPW and said, okay, let's just make it gravel because it didn't fit within the police department budget that we were working on. So they've created a gravel parking lot. It's not for me to tell you to say that that's a selectman's decision, but I was, it's the police department's, it's part of their property. They're the ones to your point, they're, they're the ones who, who are DPW and whether it's the park or the, the, Police department, our DPW is going to be the one to plow it. So it's it's all town property. But w what happens with that parking lot um, is not my. It's not for me to decide. I agree That's as far as the plowing goes, but we've been we when we had the old parking lot more or less under us here, parks are uh, paid for gravel to maintain that parking lot. D, B, uh, public works spread the gravel, but we had the cost of the gravel come out of the park commission's budget. The plowing they did free of charge as well as maintaining the ice skating rink and so forth. But when we when it developed potholes or that sort of stuff, we paid for the gravel. So right, and so that was I, I think that was before the construction of this building. And my understanding Correct. was you, we took half of what, cause you had this whole piece that you purchased and then you cut it in half and half of it was for the police department and the other half was for the um, field or the parks commission. And where that half is, is where that parking lot is. What you do, who you say can park in that parking lot, it's not up to me, it's up to the board. I'm just telling you that my understanding is that it has always been part of the police department. Yeah. Thinking about this, I think we should table this. And we're gonna turn the park over to you. There will be parking, we'll figure it out, but we're gonna figure <laughs> out who's gonna be responsible for what on it. And I'm sure we'll work it out. Let's start here and let's look into it and think about this. Um, and I think we have no problem. We'll, I know we'll resolve it to everybody's benefit. We're all town people that are going to be parking here in this public. Okay, we'll figure something out. Well I, said. And I'd like to table it. And well said. Let's motion to table. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We'll figure it out. Figure that part out. Uh, fireworks, uh, Eric did get back to me and say that uh, Northfield did oh, say yeah, no charge on the police department. It's been okay. So uh, she's still gonna check with Jay Jill, let you know, uh, because- I'll you know, talk to Eric more because he just said that DPW was clearing the riverfront where we were. Yeah, you know, now it's added to, uh, now we have Arch. to do the Arch. whole area of Arch, the entire <laughs> area of the Arch. I, so, I'd say no. Well, we kind of did. We, we we sort of, that's why we went and tried to find yeah. J. Jill for you. So Yeah, no, I appreciate you taking the 
So if uh, let Jeannie find out with the officer with J. Jill, we'll let you know tomorrow. You can, and then Monday night we'll be. At, I'll try to be at the meeting. I, I don't like the outdoor meetings that you have. I'm sorry because <laughs> I can't. I'm allergic to the mosquitoes. So. I just can't. I know, but I'm allergic to that. So I mean. Meetings now in general, they allow back in yes. town hall. Yeah, so. without masks. Without masks, so. All town um, buildings without masks. And with, the, with the, the lifting of the emergency order until legislation passes, otherwise you actually, you are required now to be meeting in person. You cannot meet virtually. You cannot have an all virtual meeting. It has right, but the location can be where we. Oh set yeah, the location. absolutely. Uh, it, there's two people that would rather go inside. We can easily go inside. I just said Riverfront because the town office wasn't open. We didn't want to do virtual. So, and it's early enough that we can change the notice and yeah. go to town right. meeting, to town hall. So, yep. okay. And so the movies in the park are all set. Did they they contacted you and they're all set up with yep. the movies in the park with yep. all the, the whole thing? I saw the applications, but I didn't see that. Yep. Okay. Where's so any other uh, at Riverfront? Riverfront. Okay, cool. Yep, Riverfront. Like uh, any other questions for the board? The other uh, event that we have coming up on the 19th is um, Wildlife Encounters at the oh. park at 11 o'clock. So. Oh, okay. Pictures. Yes, the 19th. It's okay. 11 o'clock at a uh, riverfront they'll be bringing in for Scott. The, I, I've been there. You've been there. I've, been, I've got a hundred. I've got a hundred. I know. I've got 140. I've got 140 kids. I've been there like 10 minutes. <laughs> And and I understand that you're looking for new members too. This is a good venue to uh, entertain. Announce that. Yep. Announce that you yep. are looking yep. for. We have two slots still open. So. Looking for members uh, at, for the Parks Commission, Parks and Recreation. Yep. Good. All right. Um, and we have started already. I've signed up the fireworks. December fourth will be our. Christmas parade. Oh, okay. Um, it's going to be a new yeah. challenge oh, yeah. for us because we no longer have Marina on the commission. To... Save our candy budget. <laughs> <laughs> so okay. uh, that is going to be a challenge because uh, that's good. That's a great loss to your committee. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I haven't talked to her. That she was she was going to think about maybe. Uh, just working with the commission on uh, the Christmas on the parade. parade. So, yep. uh, she she enjoys doing the Christmas parade. But That'd be great. So you're going to have an actual parade, mm -hmm. floats and and that stuff. That's our game plan. We, we, I didn't folks, know. Tell us no, we no. Wait, <laughs> no, I got nothing. I got nothing bad to say. Uh, that's the day we're starting the concert series again, too. No, December, no, December 4th. 4th. Oh, December 4th. Christmas 4th. And I thought you said July 4th. I, <laughs> man, this is going to be great. No, and you're the, and you're Santa Claus. Uh, well, you got to just grow the beard out. I'm going to eat some. <laughs> no, we got Santa Claus <laughs> all uh, lined up. <laughs> um, we're still discussing as far as the uh, kids coming in and sitting on his lap. He's still... Well, by that time, maybe more people gets vaccinated. Uh, that's, he says, let's wait until we get closer yeah, yeah, to yeah. it. I says, that's fine, Sandy. No, I want to be in the parade. Yeah. That's so. the best part about being a selectman, Bob. <laughs> the parade, <laughs> yep. throwing candy. <laughs> it is, it's the best part. It is Scott, the I'm telling part. you, it's the best part. <laughs> oh, if you... Uh, if I'm you excited. haven't seen him, Scott. Oh, I have. have <laughs> yeah. yeah. Way DPW decorates the. Yeah, it's great. Truck it's fantastic. is great. So. All right. Um, moving on. Any I, other questions? One one question. It seems like, and I'll approach Eric on this. It seems like uh, Eric's got some 
contacts or pulls with the Northfield selectmen. We'd love to get them back in the parade too. But he just made a he just made a phone call. They've got phones, and you could call. Yep. We we send them. Oh, you tried. So oh, yeah. We send them letters inviting them and everything, and never hear a word back from them or anything. Well, I'm so. meeting with them on Friday, so maybe I can. Just Drop a drop, drop a, a drop a yeah. We'll thing, we'll so. start egging them on. on. We could do we, we could do sign wars on the <laughs> There we go. About the break. Okay. So, anything else? That, mm -hmm. Questions? Or? No. no. no but, thank uh, you, thank know, you all. for all you guys do because it yeah. you know the the cultural things that you guys do are really what makes everybody you know feel part of the town and yeah, appreciate and, it. and the yeah. families. Mm -hmm. it, oh, we appreciate it. So, Especially down there at Riverfront, it's that's our town common. You guys yep. do a great yep. job promoting all that. Yeah, community. thank you all. Really yeah. great job. Good, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming thank in. Thank you. Thank it. you all. Thank you. Okay, Jeannie, I think you're up. So, uh, I think last week was the second week you looked at um, two weeks ago I brought forward the pets in the workplace policy at your request you asked me to draft something up I did you looked at it last week and asked for another week um, to review so I'm bringing it forward um, tonight to see if you have a decision on this Jeannie, I, I like it. I, there's one question I have on it on the bottom, the second to the last one minute, page one of two, where it starts if any of these occur. And then it says, as a general rule, if the pet misbehaves three times or becomes overly aggressive, their owner may be prohibited from bringing the pet to the office again. I, it seems uh, why are we waiting? My question when I read it was why are we waiting three times if the dog becomes overly aggressive? Well, I think that I think it's um... I think there are two. First of all, it can be whatever you want it to be. I drafted a policy, if so if you want to make changes, I'm fine with that. That particular language, um, it was uh, either or. So if they misbehave <clears throat> three times, so let's say they go to the bathroom first time, second time, third time, you're out. Or if they're overly aggressive, it's not they have to be overly aggressive three times. It's if they're overly aggressive, they're out. Says they may be prohibited, and they may be, but they should. Oh, they I should. see what you're saying. Okay, so it's the way I'm reading it. So it's a separate yes thought process. If the pet misbehaves three times, period, or or becomes overly aggressive, right? Two sure. separate thought process. I get it. Right. I'm fine with it now. Well, one of the things it says if they become overly aggressive, the owner may be prohibited. So if it leaves it up to the town you know, administrator. They should right. or they shouldn't. So, but you know, I I have a problem because I go into people's houses and service stuff, and every time I've had a dog go after me, everybody says my dog's good. My dog never goes after anybody. My dog never does that. But yet, get bitten. I've been bitten before, and. I can change that to shall. It doesn't. Yeah. Again, and it, this is yours. And I think it should be shall. Um, and uh, anything aggressive is, <clears throat> you know, the, the misbehaves and stuff like that. You know, you, you can determine if it's become a problem or just a aggressive behavior is. So let's take. Let's break that down. So let's say they misbehave three times, and let's say. Um, it's they've gone to the bathroom three times. Is that 
is that the level that you want to say shall be prohibited or is the shall be prohibited or shall be yeah prohibited from being overly aggressive is is you know one time and you're out or is it if they misbehave whatever that is three times you're out there doesn't matter to me i'm just trying to clarify aggressive uh behavior from um and so, i don't even think overly so that's how, too skeptical okay. but any aggressive behavior it's a, a animal so, should be prohibited. okay so how about this as a general if a, a pet misbehaves three times um their owner may be prohibited from bringing the pet to the office again if a pet becomes aggressive they shall be prohibited. So two different sentences. Yep. Okay. Then I'll make a motion to accept the pit. Go, oh, go ahead. Um, the other thing brought up last week was how about um, public works and the police department? I thought we shut the police department down and not accepted the police department because- This, this is our- I did In the workplace. workplace. This is a word. That includes all of them. No. So we can change it to pets in town hall. Right. Yes, but how are we going to deal with if somebody shows up at um, the public works with the dog? Kevin starts bringing <clears throat> his dog into work. I don't know if he even has a dog. He brings his dog into work, or if the police administrator starts bringing their dog into work. Is that allowed? I don't think that it should be allowed. I personally don't think it should be allowed. If they get on a call and they go and they have to go someplace. And the administrator for the public works or it doesn't right matter if or an administrator, we have people who don't go on calls in the police department would be in the badge and sitting in there. I did I did have this conversation with the police department and they said they didn't think Pets should be allowed. So we should put that. Pets in town pet, hall. Pets. No, oh, we should put pets in our permit in any other areas of the town. Well, aren't you effectively doing that if this is a pets in town hall? Right now we're allowing pets at town hall, yep. but we don't have any rule. So if we have no rule in the police station or in the public works, then they're allowed. Old saying they can't. I got to tell you, I'm flat out against pets in the workplace, period. I think that I've been growled at, barked at, had my nether regions checked out much more than I was comfortable with. And uh, pets at the meeting, I'm allergic. Just uh, dogs don't belong at work. That's me. Just me. So, I like them, but no. That, that was the thing is all departments. And the other part is, is we had a dog that was reported aggressive. Nobody wants to look and see. I didn't see it, but we have a dog that was reported by a resident that was aggressive. I think the selectmen should be reviewing that and I, look at that video. You had I did, an opportunity to? I, no, I, I did look at it. I, I did. I took. Jeannie's word for it because Jeannie did review it. Okay. I'm get it. Just say, you know, we have video. Can are the selectmen can they look at that first? Make a decision. Did a dog become aggressive in town hall? You can look at the video. The dog this is the reason why we're having a policy written because there was an issue at town hall What's we that? acknowledge that what i don't understand why you want to go back over the event what event that you're speaking about an aggressive dog at town hall i mean we're saying we shouldn't have them here we shouldn't have them there and we this... agreed we agreed that there was an issue at town hall which caused us to talk about pets in the workplace we agreed all of us agreed 
and came to a resolve and asked that we said we would allow this pet or pets to come into town hall if Jeannie wrote a pets in workplace policy, which is what she's tried to do for the last two or three weeks for us to look at it and read it. And now you want to go back and look at the video about the event that my first that started all of this was we would never had a pet policy for town hall correct or for the police department or for the public works yet we started allowing pets into the town hall correct okay this you're saying you only need to make one for town hall you're not going to allow them at the police station or at public works. Yet, we have nothing that says that. So why was it, you know, you need to have it cover all town, the whole town. We can't have it so to is it cover allowed or all not allowed? You, it, you can't have a police officer have their own did personal. I, did I say a police officer <laughs> or did I say administrative people? I, think you need I get what everything. you're saying. I get what you're saying, but they're still in the building. If there is some type of an event or something that that person is called out, there's two people here. Then let's put a policy say no for police department. Let's add to the policy no for public works. And you know we have to address it across the board, <clears throat> or if we go by this, it's allowed unless you say no, because that's what we're doing now. Got it. So um, I'm wondering if we can remedy this, mm -hmm. because if you look at the wording, and I, I read this over when we got the digital version, if you look at the wording, town hall is the only building mentioned. So if we add a line, town hall is the only municipal building where pets are allowed right at the beginning, then we've handled it. And then it can be the pets in the, it can still be pets in the workplace, but if you put that line in, you've handled it then we know that you can't have them at the PD, you can't have them at the DPW. Simple. That's what Jeannie wanted to do at the beginning. It's, it's I, I'm just trying okay. to move. <laughs> okay. So Scott, give me that line one more time. So um, town hall is the only municipal building where pets are allowed. Okay. That can be the opening, to me, that could be the opening line. And then you can, go, you can just put it right before the we believe. Okay. If that works for everyone, just How about the senior center. Have any comfort dog, service dog? Those be those. Be, those would be they're, different, though. They're legally allowed in. Yeah, yeah. Except by employees. But no, you can't deny them if they. Yes, you can because ADA says that they use reasonable accommodations for employees. That's what I'm saying, is that if an employee has a service dog, then they're allowed to bring that. Right, service dog. But they, Correct. They have to go a on blind or... as a reasonable accommodation. Right. Right. Correct. <laughs> but we don't have that. Town Hall is the only place. Okay. So you got that correct, I do. and you got the other correction. Yep. So I'll make a motion that we accept the pets in the workplace uh, with those amendments. Rogel second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. No. Oh, it failed. Okay. You can do it again when Eric comes we'll back bring to it get a definitive. Next week. <clears throat> so much for. We'll put that on the agenda for next week, Jeannie. Next on your agenda. Uh, budget committee met last evening uh, with the budget committee. The proposed budget committee secretary candidate and uh, I think uh, Scott spoke about this earlier they approved that there's a PAR in your to be signed folder if you would sign that I think it's all done all right 
Uh, next item, spraying in town buildings. Can we discontinue that? Uh, I personally think no, but only because we have the public coming in. That's my own personal opinion, Scott, John, Joe. Could we spray the uh, entrance way and around the uh, town clerk tax collector's office? Well, if we're going to do that, then we need to spray the bathrooms. We need to spray the seating areas. Um, is there an issue with it, or is it, uh, I, is it causing an issue, or I should say? I shouldn't say it's causing an issue, <laughs> but it is, uh, it is a busy time of year for um, the DPW. And um, I think since the emergency order has been lifted and we've gone back to normal, um, and the mask mandate has been lifted. Um, it seems like it's not necessary. Get, um, get just background. Is, is this for? Is, is this on hard surfaces? Is this what we're? Is this what it's been done for? Yeah. Because yes. I mean, the science reads out that hard surfaces don't. There's not a. There's a very low, super low transmission of COVID from hard surfaces. We still have the. Uh, uh, panels um, yeah. in in the town clerk tax collector's office. I say discontinue. I just I have such mixed feelings about it. I just they shut down Guilford first grade because a teacher who was second vaccinated had COVID. Yeah, I'm really having second, second feelings about, but whatever you folks decide, that will not be my decision, that's for sure. Joe, Joe, Joe says- I say discontinue. John. Yes, discontinue. Okay, Scott. I'm on the fence like you are, Pat, very honestly. It's just, I mean, I still do worry about the public with I mean, with variants out there, et cetera. Do you want to wait until Eric comes How back How often next do week? they do it, Gene? Well, right now they're doing it every day, every on, every morning. Oh. I mean, it, it doesn't seven hours every, a week. But it doesn't make any, if you believe in the science of it, then it doesn't make, it. you wouldn't do it every other day. You continue to do it every day. Um, if the town employees which we don't know you want to think about it a week we can wait till eric comes back yeah let's wait yeah everybody yes yeah wait. yeah yeah wait yeah, let's wait a week another thing on your agenda next week yes <laughs> okay um, I put together a draft program for the whip ribbon cutting ceremony. I don't know if anyone had a chance to take a look at it. I did. Looks great. All right. So if everybody's okay with that, then I will start preparing remarks, draft remarks for folks. Question. Yep. What constitutes light refreshments? So I was thinking. Um, I'm a food guy. I know. I'm so uh, what I was thinking like was hot, hot and ice coffee. Um, I was thinking muffins, maybe, you know, I had this idea about a pancake breakfast and I think that's just going to be too much. Um, uh, maybe, yes, yes, it would. Maybe um, uh, fruit and yogurt, fruit and yogurt parfait cups, you know, something easily. And then, um, and if, if, huh? Donuts. Donuts. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it kind of makes, I guess, I didn't have donuts on here, but. And police department donuts. <laughs> you Are you saying not. that? We could That's do, rude. We could, we could do cinnamon rolls No, instead. it's stereotypical, <laughs> and, I, and, I, and if we don't have donuts, they'll be pissed. <laughs> yeah, I, I honestly I didn't have donuts, so I could put those down. <laughs> Come on, it is a police department. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Guys do like donuts. I ask them all the I time. I like donuts. And, and I had I had thought if you wanted to take it one step further, breakfast sandwiches, but that might again might be too much. So I hadn't. Um, if if you're good with ice and hot coffee, uh, muffins, donuts, and those kind of fruit cup parfaits, does that work? Yeah, it sounds great Works for me. Sure. Okay. Um, 
and then um, when we do the tours, uh, we'll get people who will be tour directors. Um, and we'll be sure to have, we've got the scissors, we've got the ribbon. Um, are starting a list of people who will be invited, including the large donors, uh, brick and tile donors. Um, the, I understand that the former police chief has been invited. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the construction company, the architect. Uh, Charlie Chase. Charlie Chase. Well, so I would say to you, if you've got names of people. He's from former Owen, police chief. Former police chief. I, yeah. I understand, but what I'm saying is if you've got names, if you could send them to me. Sure. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so you're good with that. Um, Kevin uh, would like to paint the two remaining crosswalks. Uh, these are on Route 3 between the Riverfront Park and the high school. And he wanted to paint them with the blue paint. He says he's had, got a lot of blue paint left over and he'd like to use it. He asked me and I said, I thought we really needed to talk to you. So. Yes. Yes. I know there's been problems. Um, I, I'm believing that one of the crosswalks he wants to paint uh, is not in existence currently. Is that correct? He says no. There are two crosswalks that are faded. Okay. All right. The ones that he's identified. Um, there, there, there was a lot of discussion about a, a crosswalk uh, that went from the north side of Route 3 to the park, um, especially when there, there's a. You're talking in about the, park. the Winter Street? To cross over yeah. the riverfront, yeah. I don't think I don't I don't. That's not included here. No, he's okay. talking. He's talking about two that are in, in existence now that he wants to paint with blue. Yeah, paint. good enough. Well, I think it's one in existence now that's not supposed to be existent, but that's fine. Okay. Yes. I'm okay. Absolutely, paint him. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, restrictions on the number of people who can be in a public meeting has been lifted, so we are back to normal for our selectmen's meetings. And the question that I had for you is, do you want to continue offering a virtual component to the meeting so that people can participate remotely? Yes. Question. Um, I like I like the fact that we stream it live. Um, but what does that what does that cost us? Is um, there an extra expense for having to have like? Tim, Tim has had to work for a lot of these meetings, and is it just selectmen's meetings, or uh, is the? He's pretty much done with the other. Uh, he's trained uh, Janice, uh, and uh, he's he's pretty much not doing those that I'm aware of. Everyone, like uh, the Conservation Commission, I think does their own thing. Um, so, uh, I'm only aware of the selectmen's meetings because he generally participates. So if we continue them and um, for some reason it fails to communicate, are we still under that guideline? No. So it's just at goodwill? It's going. goodwill to the community because at this point anybody can come in here. There's no six-foot distance or anything. So we're not guaranteeing that it's always going to work, but we'll try our best. Correct. I, I agree with that. Yep. Yeah, I'm all for Absolutely. So all our future meetings are going to be here? Um, well, that's that's your decision. Um, one of the things that we're with this um, American Rescue Plan money that we um, we're still waiting for all the rules. The the rules seem to get be getting more and more restrictive about um, what you can spend the money on. They seem to really be kind of you know narrowing down where you can spend the money but it's still technology is one of them and uh um what tim and i have talked about is making um town hall upstairs technology the same level of technology as, as we have here with the use of some of that funds if that can happen um then i mean the reason we have it here is is because it's has more parking so 
you're not going to you're not going to change that over town hall but the technology is better here so really it's about the people listening in and the comfort of people and the ease for people to come and sit in a larger space and but at the end of the day um, if we get the technology upgrade and this board wants to meet back over there that's totally that's your decision i just get a sense that aiding their space is community space it is community space but we're selectmen and it's it's bad enough that sometimes we're called that we micromanage that we're now having our meetings here yeah i've heard that and 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 uh the optics of it sometimes i the technology the space it's beautiful i get it but we're now having our meetings here it's like it's i don't know if it, it, you hear that it's disruptive i i guess i haven't heard that it's disruptive but at, at the end of the day the reason that we're here is to provide better access to the public because we have better technology right. and as i said if we can get the technology over there yeah there'd be no re i mean that's a primary reason we're yep. here exactly and with the new chief coming i really don't want that impression that you know we're here and the new chief's here so you know give some that's, space yeah. i would like that yeah I, I like the idea if we can upgrade the town hall a little better so all the meetings can you know do that and get the yeah. money that for the because technology i will yeah i will tell you last night i i i listened in on the budget committee meeting and the faces were all blurry i i couldn't you know you couldn't see that was um, state of the art when we got it but it, it's failing now so, it's so art has changed there, there is a huge difference here and yes I, I that's that's what tim and i are working towards is trying to get that technology over there you know we um we did get some fema public assistance money that we're still waiting for that's supposed to pay for what we spent here and if we get that funding um, then we could use that over there, even if the ARP money is something we couldn't use, because that's supposed to be like fifty thousand dollars. So, I, yeah, I th it, it's first of all the act, allowing more access is just a wonderful thing. I mean, it's just a good thing, and right. it's it's going forward the way the world has gone forward. But I think um, if we can upgrade the technology, we go back to town hall. But until then, I think we use this because it, it just allows the public to <clears> see us, <throat> not be blurry. <laughs> So I should probably be blurry every once in a while. You are from where I'm sitting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. So you got your answer on that one, right? Next. So um, the couple things you know about the we talked about the fireworks. We talked about the concerts. Um, Perambulation. I have been forwarding those emails to you too those are good okay because um i've been in the middle of the back and forth so have you been able to set those meetings up or why are you guys looking at me <laughs> <laughs> did i miss I something it. here because, because john pointed at you you have your <laughs> you have your pictures by all the stone posts if i do remember <laughs> now what, no. what oh so, oh <laughs> So I, I had gotten I missed uh, that part. I had gotten feedback from Franklin. Uh, I'd gotten feedback from um, Northfield, um, and we're they were picking dates. And so I got myself out of the middle of it and just started forwarding it to you all, so you could work out your dates. And that's what I'm asking: Did you get that worked out? Um, the answer is no. Okay. If if I'm the one who's going to be contacting these people, I will reach out to them because I know how to get in touch with them. Uh, and as far as Northfield and Belmont goes, only you, you meet in the middle of the bridge because we don't have any contiguous, excepting the river, we don't have any contiguous land. The right. actual boundaries and the boundary markers are uh, bordering Samerton and Franklin. Yeah. Um, so if we're going to walk, that that would be the walk. Belmont, and you had asked me to contact Belmont, and Belmont said there's nothing. Yeah, there is. Oh. Uh, right by my house, Silver Lake okay. Road, middle of uh, the bridge. Um, 
And, That's where it changes. And you remember, you do remember now that the whole island is now in Belknap County. It's, That's correct. Okay. So it wouldn't it wouldn't have to be there. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll just go back to the emails and see where they're at. And yeah, sure. and I will I will study that and I will reach out and I, actually <laughs> I reach out to you, get your contact numbers, and then. Uh, so I'll, it's the yeah it's the town um, administrator in uh, Northfield who said he would. Uh, go out. I, and remember, there were some, there, somebody could only do it in the evenings, and the, then you guys were Franklin. going back and forth. It, it's the, the Franklin. Yes, music. the Franklin guy. Only on a weekday yes. is ideal for them. Right. Okay. Well, I get it. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, and I'll be in touch with you, John. Anything else? That's all I have, unless you have any questions for me. Well, you, um, uh, the FYI, the the second one yep. down. Did you want to answer on that one, um, or you want to wait for the new chief? Well, he, so uh, I had. I know the town wants an SRO, um, and my impression is that the school wants an SRO. Uh, and I, w I didn't know until I had gotten a call from the superintendent that he was actually looking at reinstituting that program, which is why he was interested. I didn't know until he told me that that's why I wanted to talk to the chief, the new chief, because he wants to start that program back up because they like the program. It's a great program. Yeah. Wonderful program. So, uh, so I don't. I didn't know if it required a, a approval from you. I was just telling you that that's that's what it was he was looking for. There are a few offices, more than one officer here that is trained to do that, and they go over for the day. Yep. So it's not. Um, and just for your knowledge, um, Scott, go in and sit in on one of them. On uh, John, on the on the second one down the FYI, the leader program, absolutely What's amazing. What's the acronym stand for? Uh, law enforcement. Um, I should know this uh, one. I've law been to the class too. Education, drug, and addiction. I think a drug and. It, it's like dare only. Yeah, it's on it's, steroids. It's, yeah, 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 yeah. It's more sophisticated than the dare program, yeah, yeah. but it's more interactive with the teachers and the police. Teach it together, interactive, and you sit there and and then the kids are actually uh, part of the in program. Part of the discussion. program. It's discussion and and it's mind blowing what comes out of it. Oh, one of the things is. How about Samberton and Northfield? Or what parts are they taking in, in on the school district? As far as they come, as far as this program is concerned, or any programs, because I, you know, I, I don't want to be all of our personnel always used for everything at the school if it's uh, supposed to be split amongst all of the towns. about that well in the past it's been split jen adams did the dare program for years for years over there so does she still do it i know she does. i don't know whether she does or i don't not. think she does um i don't know if there are offices it's a good question we should we ask have them involved in the programs too there are some you know, offices that come in addition to ours, but I don't know what towns they're from that come involved in this. They have to be trained in order to do this program. They have to be go, you have to go through that training in order to teach it. So what happens is we have to pay to have our, our officers trained in that. And then we have to go put the time to teach and work with the kids. Right. It should be part of the burden should be on Northfield and Sammerton. Remember, our town administrator went through the training, not our current. I was going to say, I don't remember that. <laughs> but our prior yeah. town administrator went through the training 
because that was the field in which she wanted to go into. She went through the training in Monel Road and taught a couple of few classes over there. Yeah. No, oh, because a lot of the kids, you know, like we have things with the kids on the bikes. They're actually in yeah. Northfield, but they're doing things in Tilton. So I mean, it's a good to have point. all of the police departments involved <laughs> in even the drug things and working have this... together with the right. kids. I certainly think we should reach out to the other departments and, yeah. and gauge their interest. But Northfield and San Martin mm -hmm. actors do show their, their part of the burden in that they pay the taxes that pay the SRO because we're reimbursed for, for the time they spend over there. Now, whatever is in excess of that is excess and, but- you get reimbursed for the SRO. Yeah, the school district pays us, right. but Northfield and Sammerton both contribute the taxes, tax money to the, as well as to, to, to right. the north, school district. In order for us to do this part, we have to pay for the leader, and then we also devote extra time for this. I don't know if it's extra time or I don't know how the program works, John. But we used to can look into this. We used to go in over. We used to allow them to go over, I believe, comp time, which ultimately was our monies. It was like a four-hour class, but it was like a twelve-week thing. Eight weeks, I think. Let's see what the other police yeah. departments say. And then I also we will can... wait till the chief comes in and, and then, Her, yeah. yeah. Agree. She can, when she goes Her, and meets together. Sambiton in Northfield, that can be part of the discussion. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Because she's all, all right. about SR. <clears throat> Any more questions for uh, Jeannie? No. All right. Having none under new business, is there any business to come before us? Do we have anybody online that needs to talk with us? No, having no one online, no public. Um, Jeannie's all finished. And I would say we're going into non-public, right? Okay. We'll be going into non-public in the conference room. Oh, okay. So uh, per RSA 91A colon three, Two, A, the dismissal, promotion, compensation of any employee or the disciplining of such employee or the investigation of any charges against him or her unless the employee affected. One, has the right to a public meeting and two, request that the meeting be open, in which case the request shall be granted. And RSA 91A, colon three, two, B, the hiring of any person as a public employee. We expect to be back into public session at approximately 8.45 p.m. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote, please. Scanlon, yes. Ruggles, yes. Jessamine, yes. Ponsatino, yes. All right. <clears throat> I need my phone. I need this. I need this. Pen. This conference will now be recorded. All right. Hey, I did Over. All right. Time is 9.29, we're back in public session. Um, I'd like to make a motion to seal the minutes of the non-public meeting number three and number five of June 10th, 2021, because the reasons justifying the need for the non-public session still remain. Second. There's a second. Any other comments or discussion? Roll, is it a roll call? All those in favor say aye. 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 The time being 9.30. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion second. Any that's non-debatable? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Can I add your firm on that? Oh, I'm sure. Thank you.